an actual couch, though, Mr. Unsung NPC? Uh, unfortunately, I am not. I wish I was, but I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Might be for the best. You could fall asleep on a couch, you know? True. Yeah. yeah so that, tonight that be, we are supporting uh, the National Alliance on Mental Illness, the nation's largest grass, grassroots mental health organization. Their work is focused around three pillars, education and support, awareness and advocacy. And uh, one of their key messages that I think we can all support is it's okay to not be okay right now. Uh, I'm going to kick it off to you, Pondor and Unsung. You guys can tell us about your run and what you're going to be showing us tonight. So I am going to be doing any percent Pathfinder Kingmaker tonight. Um, literally just get through the game as quickly as possible. Uh, this game is a CRPG based on the Pathfinder rule set, uh, as indicated by the name. Um, the brain just died. That happens a bit. <laughs> um, that's going to happen a lot, by the way. My brain just turns off every once in a while. Um, so, you know, got to build up a character, got to put all our stats in, got to figure out what we're good at and what we're bad at. We're bad at most things. We're good at one or two things. Um, and then we just go through and, uh, got some clips for you guys, got some out of bounds for you guys, got some, uh, boss skips for you guys. We got a whole bunch of fun stuff. Uh, and yeah, I'm just going to get into, uh, building the character here. Heck so yeah. we have a, a very specific build that we have to go through. Well, there's, there's multiple different builds, but this one's obviously the fastest. Um, if you notice, we tend to uh, not care about physical stats. <laughs> um, <laughs> who does, really? Yeah, you know, who, I mean, <laughs> we're all a bunch of nerds here. Like, nobody puts points in. Uh, so, one of two things that we really need to focus on early game, we really need to focus on wisdom and... Uh, Basically, perception. Basically, oh, uh, actually, we do have a donation incentive for the name for this character. Uh, I need to. That we do. Yeah. So, what is, what is the name that we came up with? The name that won with one hundred and fifty dollars mm -hmm. was Cowie. C O W I E. All nice. right. This is Cowie, King Cowie. Um. And yeah, so time will be starting in just a moment. We do not start time until after this screen comes in. There will be a little storybook that pops up, uh, similar to the one that the loading screen. And then once we close that, that is when the game actually begins. Um, so one thing that I wanted to point out, uh, we took two spells at level one. Both of those are pretty important. Expeditious Retreat basically just makes you move faster. Um, it is personal only. So we can't use it to, like, boost the entire group, uh, but we will continue explaining that. Just so getting started in three, two, one, go. Um, so there, because we have an animal companion, Expeditious Retreat isn't as useful as uh, it would be if we were just a solo class. But there are some uh, points in the run where we do not have the cat. Um, and... It really helps out a lot. Uh, the other one is Bane. Bane is a very interesting spell. It is one of the more recent skips and also one of the oldest ones because it is an actual dev intended skip for an entire chapter of the game. Um, or not an entire chapter, but like the first like two thirds of it. Um, you just go up, cast the Bane spell, and it unlocks a door that you normally have to go through a fairly lengthy fetch quest uh, to get through. Um, so what we're doing here is we are basically, like the story of the game is, we are basically a mercenary who's going to just become a king. Yep. Um, <laughs> yeah! so we are hired by the people that own this mansion and immediately assassins come up because of course they do. <clears throat> Jamandi Aldori, who, by the way, skipping her conversation is the best part of the speed run because... She is just one of the most annoying benefactors to ever Indeed. exist. <clears throat> it could be worse. It could be Natalia. Uh, Natalia, I think, is worse. Um, hey! So this is a 
Please, kitty. All right, so the cat is our main damage dealer, as you can notice. This fight is not going great. Usually we want these two to kill these two creatures, or these two guys, before the cat kills. Like, the cat basically runs over here, kills these threes, and has these three, and has time to, like, run back sometimes before uh, your two characters kill the two people. Not great, but not a great start. It happens. Um, not really... Uh, stuff, things, words. Now, is that a druid companion or a ranger? Uh, it is... So, we are a sacred huntsmaster. It is a it is an inquisitor uh, archetype that gives you an animal companion at level one. Oh wow! Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, so inquisitor gives us three very good things. Um, <laughs> well, actually four, but the fourth one we don't get until the very end of the game. Uh, a it gives us every skill as a class skill. B That's it gives broken. us access to those two spells that I talked about earlier. So the bane and the excavation retreat spell. And three, it gives us access to the animal companion, which is absolutely busted. Um, I actually just learned last week that the animal companion actually starts at level two. Um, and has, yeah. like, its own leveling curve. It's really strange. It does, yeah. Like, it doesn't get past level 16 no matter what level you get to. It's just it's just a whole thing. Uh, also, you just noticed, uh, sometimes the cat just gets stuck behind people. <laughs> It, it happens. Pathing problems in a CRPG? Never heard of it. Uh, I always make the joke, it, we're playing Pathfinder and the pathing is bad uh, sometimes. Also, you just noticed, uh, I, I accidentally selected the entire rest of the team except for the one person that I wanted to select. That happens sometimes, I don't know why. Um, every once in a while you will click on a character and... It will just deselect that character instead of selecting it. Yeah, so see there, like, uh, uh, the girl that he just got on his team, the, like, white chick with the scythe, uh, she's able to just run through those traps because she's undead. And she's like, yeah, the traps don't affect me. And then instead of wasting time trying to unlock them, she can just blow right past them. Yep. Um, and also, so we go into stealth there because that skips that fight that showed up for just a second. Like, it yeah. showed the cutscene, but the fight didn't actually initiate. Uh, that is because as soon as you see those characters, it will play that cutscene, but they still have to see you to actually initiate the fight. So we just go into stealth. They are blind because they're looking directly at us next to them. Um, and we just walk right past them. So that's, that's, a, that's a quick fight scene. Saves probably like 6 to 12 seconds. Uh, so, speaking of 6 to 12 seconds, uh, this game does actually use the 6 second round system from Pathfinder Tabletop. Um, and as such, uh, like, oh god. Uh, the camera likes to jump over to the left there in this fight, and I constantly forget about it, so it's it can be a problem. Send you guys over here. We want Tartuccio to set people on fire. We want Valerie to come and hit this person. Uh, so Tartuccio, we don't like him. No, he doesn't. He is not a great person. But he does have a very good spell. He has the spell Burning Hands, which is very nice at level 1 because it's an AoE. Also, Jamandi just took three years to do this, which is um, hello? Jamandi, what are you doing? <laughs> Yeah, like, usually she one-shots all of those things, yeah. and she just uh, took three hits that time, which is basically she min-rolled on damage. Jeez. Um, she's supposed to be a master duelist. What is this? Uh, Yeah, she's just bad at her. It's fine. <laughs> oh, man. All right, so here we go. The game would stop eating my... All right, there we go. Uh, so next step, we take a level in Eldritch Scion. Uh, Eldritch Scion is a mage's archetype that gives you a, uh, a bloodline like a sorcerer. Uh, we take one level in this, A, because it gives us a familiar, which is really nice. B, because it gives us a second, uh, 
it gives us a second bloodline. Uh, and that's not something that's supposed to happen. You're not supposed to be able to get two bloodlines. No. Uh, so if you take, and the way that we get two bloodlines is we take one level, we take the level in mages. Um, and then after that, we take a level in sorcerer. We actually go sylvan sorcerer for the rest of our level. Um, which is a forced, uh, bloodline archetype. It is forcing you to get the sylvan, or, yeah, it's just the sylvan uh, bloodline. Uh, which gets you, like, a lot of illusion spells and stuff like that. Uh, the reason the arcane bloodline is important is because dimension at tour? level... What's that? Is it because of Dimension Tour? <laughs> no, actually, it is not. We actually, oh, okay. we just get we just choose Dimension Tour when we level up. Um, although Dimension Tour is super nice. Um, no, arcane bloodline gives us a boost... Hello, Amiri? Why are you trying to... Pathing. Whatever. Um... Gives us a plus two to the save DCs of any uh, one spell class, which we use to great effect against the final boss in the game. So we actually solo the final boss in this game. We have no party members whatsoever, uh, except for us and our good friend, the kitty cat. He and... Uh, You, we want you guys to attack. Don't move there. Right. So we want the rage people to kill the range people because the range people are good at killing the range people quickly. Melee people kill the melee people because that's what's left. <laughs> Sorry. Just and hey, look, it's a somewhere. very not uh, suspicious and very straightforward nymph that is such a good person. Such a good person. Uh, we just got three very good items from that chest. Uh, these are DLC items, but they are free DLC, so they are part of the speedrun. Uh, the belt gives us a plus two to constitution and gives us a bonus to saves. Uh, I don't need to do this. That's part of an old route that I just changed like last week. So muscle memory is still there. Um, gives us a plus two to constitution and also gives us a bonus to uh, fatigue saves, which is very important. We move around a lot, and fatigue will slow us down if we get it. Uh, well, fatigue less so, exhaustion is what we're scared of. Um, and we have to move a fair bit uh, to get an item that makes it so that that doesn't matter anymore. And we really don't want to get exhausted before we go, so that belt is super nice. Um, the other two items that we get are the two familiars. You will see them... Moving around, we have a cat and a red panda familiar on top of our bunny rabbit familiar, so we just have, like, a small zoo following up. <laughs> I can't believe we just got an... Uh, so I've been running this game since June. I have gotten an encounter on the way to the Ancient Tomb twice, and this is the second. <laughs> Marathon luck. Yeah, there we oh, go. Starting early. Yeah, uh, I would rather that be the bad luck as opposed to failing the checks in the ancient tomb because this place control real bad. Um, so the very beginning of the run is very experience, uh, like height. Yeah. We need to hit level three. Not immediately after leaving this place, we have one other thing that we can do to get to level three. Um, once we do that. Um, basically, we have, what is it, a total of 80 experience of leeway. Also, I can't believe that this wizard isn't dead yet. That is the tankiest wizard of all time. Um, so, I don't know why that happened. Uh, so we open this door, we come down here, we quick save here because this can be a troll. Uh, we have to disable this trap because this trap gives us a good amount of that experience that we need. And thank God Lindsay didn't set it off. Lindsay needs to roll a three or lower to set that trap off, and she does it all the freaking time. <laughs> it's actual work. All right. Uh, all right. We did not get uh, bad luck there. Uh, any of those... So if we failed the second of those three checks in that storybook, we would have had to reload the save. Or, I'm sorry, if we failed the second one, we would have been okay. If we failed either the first or third one, we would have had to reload. 
um, because the second one only gives 54 experience and still lets us get here, which gives us the rest of the experience. Um, so here we leave. And uh, we are now about to drop off the rest. We do not need them anymore. We will be soloing for the remainder of chapter one. I really enjoyed the like storybook skill checks in this game. I felt like there were even less of them in the second one. Uh, yeah, there weren't, but the the thing about the second game, uh, Wrath of the Righteous, um, is that the storybooks were way more important. Yeah, they were. They were like they, like super these. They kind of just happen. Yeah, and the, like some of them can be quite like inane or mundane. They're like not not really important, especially uh, if you do the game multiple times. <laughs> yeah, you're just like okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. So you see, we got our menagerie following us now. We love um, it. And there's level three. All right, so that's what we needed. We needed to hit level three at this point. Um, the reason that we need to hit level three at this point is because we get another feat. Uh, if you're not familiar with the Pathfinder system, feats are basically uh, just things that you're really, really good at. They are basically like, kind of like low-key super. Uh, yep. This one just makes us really, really good at seeing. Uh, that skill focus perception, that is what we need. This and literally any other stuff. Um... Because we are about to be going into a, uh, an area of the map where we are in a section of the game. Oh my god, really? Please? Thank you. Um, a section of the game where we need to hit a bunch of fairly high perception checks, uh, in fairly rapid order. Uh, we are, if you notice, we're approaching what is supposed to be the boundary of this portion of the game, and we just walked right past. Um, it still boggles my mind every time I see you do it. I'm just <laughs> like, I, I'm just like, I wish I could have thought to have tried something like this. Right. At yeah. All. <laughs> uh, so what I just did is, so this fog right here, this like cloudy bit, we are not supposed to be here. We are technically out of bounds. Um. So the game forces you into one of those storybooks. And uh Okay, so there's fatigue. This is this is the part uh that the belt that we got is really important for. Um there we go. Okay, so we got here. Um So that fog is supposed to be Oh hey Dagroth! He's a... Dagroth is the only other person that has ever speedrun this game, and I just saw him in chat. <laughs> um <laughs> Well, uh, he did the thing. He did the thing. I did the thing, yes. Um. So that item that we just got is the Heart of Ira. It is an oh, incredibly man. busted item. Um, and I, 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 I will explain that after I finish explaining the first thing that I started to explain and keep stopping because I keep getting... Um. <laughs> um so skipping the fog wall is actually pretty easy. Um... It's a combination of three inputs um, once that storybook pops up, or once that encounter uh, window pops up, sorry. Uh, you hit rest, whatever rest key you have. You gotta be kidding me. Um, <laughs> you hit rest, then you hit escape to close the rest menu, which pulls up a an option to continue moving your character. Um, and then you just say continue. And as long as you hit, um, please, Really? You're gonna... Thank you. The game is being nice at the moment. Uh, the game is usually not nice. Um, if you hit them in rap uh, fairly rapid order, and then you get to another crossroad, like another intersection like this right here, instead of pushing you back to make it so that you do not pass through that fog, uh, it just pushes you back to um, like the, the most recent intersection that you got. So if you do that, it allows you to skip past like, get out of the area that you're supposed to be confined to and get into much later areas of the game. Um, so, yeah. Uh, now to talk about the Heart of Ira. The Heart of Ira is a very, very busted item. It does two things. The first thing that it does is it gives you a passive 
immunity to both fatigue and exhaustion, which is why I said that uh, we don't really care about exhaustion past this point, because we can't get it. Um, the second thing is that it gives you a damage or up. Please? Thank you. All right, so we just skip past the fog wall again. All right. Um... Uh, so we will be using that damage aura in just a moment. Um, if we actually find the thing. Okay, so this is the first of those perception checks. That's why I had to reload the save there, is because I failed the perception check. Uh, if you fail the perception check, you're kind of just out of luck. Um, so we come over here. There's a pretty beefy golem here. We turn on the heart of Ira, and we have a staring contest with the golem until it dies. Um, the Heart of Ira, the damage aura, does not aggro enemies that are not already in combat with you. Um, so, we use the Heart of Ira. It is a fairly slow portion of the run. It takes about two and a half to three minutes to kill this guy, and then we have to do three other enemies after this. Uh, the longest one being the Dragon Ilthuliac, which takes <laughs> about eight minutes to die. Who um, does get mentioned by uh, a dragon in Wrath of the Righteous. Do they? I actually missed that. She talks about him. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, well, he's dead. So. Yeah, he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> we can murder him, <laughs> and he never even puts up a fight. Got um, killed by cold in his sleep. Yeah, basically. Um. Yeah, so... In tabletop, this would never fly. There's no, no way this would no, 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 no. <laughs> this, is, this is only something that would work in a video game. Yeah, yep. as a um, DM, this is just burning me so hard. Right yeah, now. it's... <laughs> <laughs> the the aggression I felt when I first watched one of his runs and he did this, I was just enraged. Get over it. The audacity of it. <laughs> and then he did the dragon, and I was like, no. Nope. Yep. Never yeah, again. Yeah, you know, and we all... So we do the dragon. So, okay. There's, oh. the, there's four enemies that we kill this way. We kill this golem. We kill another golem in the Ornate Ruins. Um. Yeah, yeah. Da what Dagros in chat said is true. It is just this one item. Um. Uh, so there's this golem. There's the golem in the ornate ruins, which is a bit higher level. It gives us a lot more experience than this one does. Um. But it only has like a little bit more health, so it's roughly the same time frame as this one to die. Then we do the dragon, which gets us up to level eleven. And then we take a break from staring people to death, and we go and we actually do actual combat. We go and kill the Stag Lord, which is the final yes. boss of Chapter 1. Um, yeah. And then we go and we kill Farnaros the Lich, which is, like, consist considered one of the more difficult, like, one of the most difficult. Like, it's the fight that is, like, you have to go and kill, you know, what is it, like, 40 other things just to unlock the door normally? A million. Yeah, it's... Awful. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Basically, you have to do every non-essential like node on the map. Yep. Uh, this is actually considered one of them, I think. Uh, so we killed this guy for two reasons: a, he gives us level four, and b, he gives us that hat. Excuse me. That, uh, hat. that hat gives us a plus five to perception, which helps us get the other things. Yes. Uh, oh, let's actually put the hat on. Yeah, so the whole Beautiful. point of this first chapter is that you're signed on to, like, kill the stag lord, but you're taking out two giant golems and a dragon before that. Yep. And like, then we just casually wander over and, uh... Annihilate and the murder fort. a lich as well. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Beta Strep actually just mentioned what we do with the, uh, with the Farnaros door. We just dimension door past it. Um, also, uh, we are still incredibly low level for this portion of the game. So you saw I hit an encounter. I did not get past that encounter. And I immediately reloaded a save. That is because any encounter that we get right now will murder us horribly. These are um, all like mid-teen encounters, aren't they? They're like, yeah, it's something along those lines. Like, you could just run into a bunch of Elder Water Elementals. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> it's, it's a good time. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, you know. Skelebro I've... would not murder me, no. Uh, Skeleman, the Cellar Man. Uh, there is a... Oh, God. Uh, there is an encounter 
in this game where it's just you found a peaceful encounter or something like that uh or peaceful traveler encountered you or something like that. um and it is the skeletal merchant he is a great guy he sells Love you him. a lot of good stuff uh we never want to see him uh <laughs> <laughs> um I've been oh, little... also, uh, this is something that I thought of literally like 10 minutes ago, uh, but we could have had a kill or save the animals incentive because we unfortunately have to kill the cat. Um, so I mentioned earlier that we were going to be using Expeditious Retreat in certain parts of the game. Um, going up to the dragon's lair is one of them. Um, unfortunately, we have a cat with us, which makes it so that... Even if my character gets up to that door, the cat still runs at his normal speed and will take the same amount of time as he does. So we kill the cat here to save a couple of seconds up to the dragon. Uh, fortunately, the rest of our uh, little menagerie don't care about this aura at all. Nah, they're um, just familiar. Bunny's fine. The red panda's red doing panda. backflips. Back yeah, he, the like, <laughs> they all have like... The cat? I don't know where the cat even is. He's probably, like, down here, blocked by the cat. <laughs> yeah, that, uh, that cat is, is the most active mood. cat of all time. He never stops moving, which is completely unnatural. And I'm pretty sure that cat is actually a demon. Um, What if he's just used to adventuring? I mean, that's not a cat. He's got to get accustomed to it. Uh, oh, uh, so something about the, the the skeletal salesman and the random encounters and all that stuff. Um, you do always want to see the skeletal salesman. Oh, yeah, there's the cat down here. Um, if we zoom in on him. Yeah, he's practicing his... Um, if you see an encounter, there can be three encounters that you see. There is one that is basically a forced encounter. You can't. You do not even get the option to evade it. Uh, we will most likely see one to two to five of them. Um, I think on my PB I got five, which is insane. Um, <laughs> you can also get the one that you've seen a fair number of so far, which is if the window pops up and it's like, do you want to attack or do you want to evade? And then you have the option to evade. The third is the skeletal salesman, which also pops up. Do you want to, you know, actually go into the encounter or do you want to evade? You... It is best to get the Skeletal Salesman because you can always evade him. You are never forced into the encounter with him, whereas if you get one of the other... Uh, like, obviously, if you get the forced, forced encounter, you have no option. And if you get the other one, you have the potential to fail the, the check. Um, stuff. Things. Words brain um let's see what else oh uh so i guess i could talk about like what we're building towards with our character so the final boss of the game has a fairly um glaring weak she has a really low fortitude <laughs> um as there the is a do. spell in the game called Baleful Polymorph. What Baleful Polymorph does is it is a fort save, or you get turned into a helpless little puppy dog. Okay. You cannot attack, you cannot cast spells, you cannot do anything. So what we do is we turn her into a dog and then we eat her with the cat. Um, and that's kind of, why am I not selected? Nature. Yeah, you know, it's just like a, a nice role reversal. The cat eats the dog this time. Love it. Um, there are a couple of different build setups that we can make use of to, uh, just based on, like, what our tool set looks like at the time. Because, like, we could accidentally have used too many spells or something like that. We might not be able to buff the cat as much as we would like to. Um, or, like, we might not have... Uh, basically, greater invisibility is absolutely necessary for that fight because if you do not have greater invisibility, she still has, even on story difficulty, Still has like a 50 plus armor. Uh, the cat has like a plus 20, uh, plus 30 or something to hit, but he basically still needs to crit to hit her if you uh, do not have greater invisibility. If you have greater invisibility on, uh, it's basically a guarantee. Uh, her AC is so high for being just 
a plant. Yeah, it's it's kind of. I shouldn't have done that. Uh, please tell me I saved late enough or early enough. Okay, I might ha I made a mistake, but it's fine. We just go back to this more recent save. Uh, so I I saved a little bit. Um, too late. I should have saved exactly on that node that I saved right past, just just now. Um, because the next thing is Ilthuli X Lair, which is right here. It is literally right there. So if you move at all from that node and then try to save, you're going to save past the um, discovery point, and it's real bad. So fortunately. We only failed the the perception check. Um, and now to see yet another thing a DM would never let happen in a million years. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> now, this time it's a Dargan. Not only a Dargan, but a named Dargan. Yeah, a like lore based Dargan. It's fine. <laughs> One of the great ancient Dargans. <laughs> Um, so yeah, they even, like, see us here. They're like, oh god, there's intruders and the trap's not set correctly. There's literally, like, one path here to follow through. Uh, and then we just stand right here at this little, like, corner in this stone, and yeah. Uh, this is the longest, this is the longest, uh, of these staring contests. Like I said, it does average out to about eight minutes per kill. This is raising my blood pressure. I hope you know <laughs> it's, that. It's so bad. It's so bad. Um, oh, so one thing about this, we don't loot everything here. You've noticed we haven't really looted anything at all, right? Uh, even here, we don't loot everything. We loot the dragon itself, and there's a chest, like, right back here that we take. Uh, there's a whole pile of gold that you can take, and it gives you 1,000 build points, which in a casual playthrough is incredible uh the thing is, is that our kingdom doesn't exist yet so it doesn't care <laughs> uh those those thousand build points just don't exist uh because you don't have also we have the kingdom set to auto management because managing a kingdom is super slow yeah not speed run appropriate um <sighs> oh. Honestly, like, the way you build a character for the speedruns, anyone who loves to, like, power game their RPG characters, I feel like could find themselves transitioning into speedrun and just, like, ultimate power game. Because, like, the class combination you come up with, it's just, like, as a DM, I'm like, okay, what's your what's your reasoning for combining all of these classes? What's the, because it's what's good, the story sir. behind it? Don't worry about it. <laughs> how are you how how are no, you so see i was an inquisitor of abadar oh, and then um i realized that i had <laughs> magic blood and then i realized that i had different magic blood oh my no <laughs> unless you're a cross-blooded sorcerer you don't have no, two fine. magic don't bloods <laughs> This is when the DM drops an anvil. Okay. <laughs> Rocks fall, everyone dies. Oh my, I cannot. <laughs> I just, uh, I need like a story reason for everything to function. <laughs> yeah. And then like, there's me who in Wrath of the Righteous took the legend uh, <laughs> mythic path, made a level 40 character that did, you know, 1400 damage on every charge. <laughs> yeah, but Cavalier Slayer actually makes sense. Like they are Cavalier Slayer out. with one level in vivisection is right at the end. I mean, you were an undead. You have to be good at anatomy, right? I was not undead. You were. I, I, I was on the way to be a lich. Yeah, you were on the way. In your studies, I'm sure at some point <laughs> he taught you how to study the body. <laughs> yeah. Oh, trying yeah. To so uh, anybody who's played Wrath of the Righteous probably knows Playful Dark, right? They probably know that fight. I one-shot that boss with a crit. <laughs> crit him for like 700 damage at like level 14, and it was fine. Um, 
the one that like took a million tries though? I mean, yeah, there were there were a fair number of save loads there. Don't fucking judge. Oh, sorry, sorry. Don't judge me. <laughs> it, the <laughs> yeah, what he's conveniently leaving out is that it was a long haul to get to that one shot. I mean, I wasn't trying for the one shot either. I was trying to fight him legitimately, and then he cannot be fought though. <laughs> Uh, no, so I didn't have anybody to take advantage of his weakness. And no. so I was basically just trying to smash my face against a boss. It was And, just... uh, it didn't work too well. That thing, I didn't even bother fighting it after, like, two attempts. I was like, no, I'm done. <laughs> I'm out. Uh, so, Dragon should be dying here shortly, I think. Ooh, that last one hit for ten. Yeah. And then this one hit for two. <laughs> Uh, so, the Heart of Ira does 2d6 damage, for anybody that's curious. Um, 2d6 damage every 6 seconds. Um, so, 2 is literally the lowest damage that it can possibly do. <laughs> Playful no longer has regen, just fast healing. Okay. Which... Huh. I don't know if I would prefer regen... Or fast healing. I think I would prefer regen, because you can turn that off. Yeah. But fast healing doesn't keep him from dying, so if you don't have access to that, you're... Hi, kitten. I might be getting assaulted here in a moment. Uh, I mentioned it in the Discord. My cat really likes to uh, try to sabotage my speedruns by jumping up. And... Yep, there we go. Uh, I now have a kitty. And he is currently trying to rip my headphones off of my head. Uh, sabotage. Attempted. No, stop it. Also, he really likes rubbing on the mic. All right. We have attained shoulder cap. Now he doesn't know what to do. On the screen, I just watched the red panda run up to the dragon and then immediately turn around. <laughs> <laughs> he yeah. was like nope yeah. oh I I'm love not... it when the red panda like comes up right here and then does this to the dragon like he just walks up and just taunts, taunts the dragon like crazy it's hilarious I love it oh man you should be dead why are you not dead yet my kitten <laughs> Mithridium, I think yeah, you're cheating. It's that. not possible. That's so good. Yeah, <laughs> seriously, I had like, I have over a thousand hours in this game, and like, it's it took me work. over 300 to be able to get past the first chapter. <laughs> Just trying to restart characters. Yeah. Every oh, so time. funny thing about this. So, uh, one of the, in or one of the, the incentive that we had for this game was to kill Count Smolderborn. Uh, anybody oh. who's played this game knows that man. He is the oh, no. worst. He is a trap. Why? Uh, he's not a. He's not an overly difficult fight. All right. Hey, we can continue. Okay. Kitten, stop. Leave the microphone. Uh. All right. So we are now level eleven, by the way. Uh, we now also have a plus eight to all physical stats belt, which is also cheating. That's not in the tabletop. Um, but we take it. Uh, we don't need those anymore. Uh, so we are now maxed out on perception and trickery, and by maxed out I mean we don't need anymore. Wait, what's uh, what did you say was cheating? Uh, the plus eight stats belt, because uh, that's not a thing in the tabletop. I know there are plus stats belts that exist. They stop at six. Oh, they do. They, they do not go past eight, or they do hey. not go past six. Um, so haste, obvious <clears throat> choice for a speed run doubles or adds 30 feet to everybody's movement speed in your party for rounds per level uh yes yes dagrath i did uh which is better than my um build guide that i have on youtube i did not explain the the reason that you take the magus level in my youtube guide for this game um which was instantly pointed out by Dagroth, and then I cried because I was like, I actually put a lot of effort into that, and it's bad. 
That happens to me often. It's yeah. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, and we take stealthy. Stealthy. Uh, we take stealthy here because there is a fight that we skip later on in the game, uh, where we have to sneak past a group of enemies. That group of enemies. Oh, I can't rest here. That's right. Uh, that group of enemies has a plus forty to perception, and we need to sneak it past them. And it uh, you kind of need to you kind of need to take all the help you can get on that. Um. So we now immediately rest because we want our kitty back. Really hope that we don't get ambushed. All right. I've never seen myself get ambushed. All right. I've never seen an ambush here, but that doesn't mean it's not possible. You can cast invisibility. Invisibility gives you a plus 20 to your stealth, which does not guarantee success. Uh, not against characters with a plus 40 to uh, perception. <laughs> it's not. Oh, OK. Here. So for those of you who don't know, uh, I thought I explained it, but maybe I didn't. So the reason that you take mages is it gives you access to a second bloodline, basically. Uh, so there's a there's a glitch. Um, there's a glitch in the game where if you take Eldritch Scion mages, which gives you a bloodline, you take the Arcane Bloodline. Awesome, great. Could you please let me go? This game is being very rude at the moment. Um, so the Arcane Bloodline is important because it lets us boost the DC of one of our spell schools by two at levels 15? 15, 16, something like that. Um, and so we do that so that we can get a boost to our spell DC. Uh, I'm we assuming then... transmutation. Yes, transmutation. Yes, exactly. Oh, wow. Um, like, the part of our build that isn't based around maxing out, like, perception and stuff is based around maxing out uh, hat damage and also uh, transmutation uh, DC. And, like, basically trying to make it so that we are most likely to actually get those spells off. So we take stuff like uh, Great Fortitude to make it so that we don't uh, get wrecked by things like Baleful Polymorph ourselves. Because there is a boss fight before the final boss fight that will cast Baleful Polymorph if they have enough turns to cast it. And uh, I've had them turn my main character into a sweet, helpless little puppy dog multiple times. And it's always infuriating because he's the only one that has a decent chance of actually getting rid of that effect. All right, so now we're actually doing stuff that we're supposed to be doing, kind of. We're still not supposed to be here yet. But we're supposed to be here more than we're supposed to be everywhere else that we've been. Uh, all right, so we do this. We don't do that. Uh, where's haste? Haste is not where it's supposed to be. I'm confused. All right, we're fine. Uh, so we come up here and we challenge the stag lord to an honorable duel. Ha! An honorable duel. I try to. It's not my fault that he's a. He has no honor and is a scumbag and a drunk and all kinds of just bad things. Uh, so yeah, we come in. You have you can go up to that door. There's a whole bunch of different ways that you can get into this fort. Uh, you're a supposed lot. to sneak in, but I'm level eleven. <laughs> I, I care not. But I'm level eleven. <laughs> uh, so uh, you just we just hit got them with a couple of fireballs. We got done with the uh, slow burn training montage, and now we're uh, in kind of kind of. I am upset. All right, so Stag Lord's dead. <laughs> uh, we now do this. And there we go. Oh, wait, you're still alive? How did you survive that? The tankiest archer of all time. Uh, we do this. Because there, even though we... left... Uh, even though we, like took the choice to just walk past the gate. Uh, the people at the gate are still there. 
Uh, so you have to kill them on your way up. <laughs> Stag Lord should have been training on golems and dragons instead of stags been, like this. I goofed. I goofed. I needed to loot that stuff. Oh, man. <clears throat> That's fine. It's a slight time loss. We just gotta go back in and leave again. Uh, good thing about this place, if you just leave an area, uh, it will give you the option to loot all of the people that you've killed in that area, so you don't have to like go and loot each individual person. Hey, this uh, is good. It gives us time to do a donation. Yeah, go ahead. We got we got an anonymous $25 donation saying, glad to see a good CRPG run. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for the contribution. This is a very good game. I love this game. It's a very good game. Even without the speedrunning, it's it's a solid, solid game. I put like 200 hours into this game. Like I just <laughs> for one yeah. playthrough, it was just a lot, a lot. Yeah, it was it was really good. Like I just yeah. didn't want to stop. It really is like playing the Kingmaker campaign in tabletop. I've never played the tabletop. Or... I've run it a couple times. All right, so a couple of things that we need to do here. Invis on ourselves and the cat. We come in here. There's a bunch of bandits. We're like, they're like, ah, we got here first. And I'm like, I'm going to attack you. So you hit three to attack them, and then you just walk right. Um, if you hit... The, okay, well, good. We missed that. Um, if you hit the one... Okay, we failed the athletics check. That's on. Uh, that loses about nine seconds. Um, but... If you hit the option that just says, okay, I'm leaving, and then you try to walk through, they will, for whatever reason, see you 100% of the time, um, and then force you into combat there. So if you hit attack, for whatever reason, attacking them makes you not get into combat with them. So, works for me. Uh, nonstop. I am actually working on routing Wrath of the Righteous. Uh, I will be doing that Thursday and Friday this week. I'll be continuing to work on it. Um, so, yeah. uh, also, the, uh, the bandits and the skeletons don't get along, so they try to kill each other. For whatever reason. I'm not sure why. Um, okay, so one thing that has made me very sad in the past is I would forget to re-invis the cat here, walk into Farnaros' room, and he would immediately kill me because the cat is visible. Uh, so this cutscene will play. That's fine. We hit attack, and he just doesn't do anything. So we come over here, and we remember to turn on the Heart of Ira. Uh, in my last run on Saturday, I just sat here for like two minutes without the Heart of Ira on, and I was incredibly embarrassed. <laughs> Like, people in my chat were like, what are we waiting for? And I'm like, well, we're waiting for... Oh, he's not taking damage. And I was very sad. Uh, we do have some more time for donations and other such things, if we have any. Of course. Uh, we do have a rather extensive prize pool that uh, people can enter for, for their contributions to NAMI during Questing for Glory. <laughs> Uh, retro, uh, retro, what is the name here? Retro Bit Gaming has donated a Retro Trio plus three in one system. Some also, they've also got some cool controllers there. Uh, Transqueena has graciously donated some Steam keys for some RPGs. So, uh, when you go to donate, make sure you check those uh, boxes off if you are interested in entering for any of those prizes. It goes to a good cause. Oh, yeah, people talking about Dimension Door and being able to skip things through Dimension Door. A lot of the clips in this game and, like, the ways that we get through stuff don't require Dimension Door at all. A lot of the times we just walk through them. Um, this is... One of the only... Actual, like, one of the only doors that we use uh, Dimension Door to get through. We use it to skip some cutscenes and stuff later on, but... Most of the most of the actual clipping that we do, um, is just uh, specifically set up. Like you got to move the camera to the right spot. You got to click in certain spaces. And you just walk through a wall. Uh, the cat is very good at doing that. By the way, 
We do DD the palace. Yes, I forgot about that one. Uh, for whatever reason. But yeah, we do DD the palace. But yeah, there's there's basically skips um in every single end chapter area except for the stag lords we probably could just skip past the the front gate but i think it would actually take more time to skip it than it would be to just go up to the gate and talk to the people uh, because you would still have to watch the cuts all that stuff and it just like instantly teleports you to the fight Yep. Yeah, I can't uh, get out of the Stag Lord doing his evil monologue. I have the wrong uh, Also, if you notice, we doubled up on a lot of spells. Uh, don't worry about it. <laughs> um, uh, when you no, mix no, casting no, you, classes... <laughs> you can't do that to us. <laughs> Uh, you can't poison the stag lord, but we don't go to the place where you get the poison for the stag lord. Yeah. Does the, does this game let you progress the story without waiting months? So you do have to go back to, um, like you do have to go back to the capital, and you'll skip time uh, at certain points through the run. Um, but it's usually like two-minute segment of just going through, spamming through dialogue and choosing, you know, picking voices. So we, we do still have to skip time, and it does still take in-game time. It still takes a very long time for us to get, like, or not in-game time, but, like, in-world time, I guess you would say. Um, hey, look at that. We're level 15. And we are not even close to being uh, finished with Chapter 1 yet. Get level 15 by mostly just standing around in various rooms. I stare people to death. <laughs> don't question. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> when you have to say don't question it this many times with your character, <laughs> that's a red flag. As it's a fine. As a red it's flag. Fine. What was I picking here? I take Boon Companion. Sometimes I forget what I'm doing. Uh, oh, we take that. We take that. Uh, we take Rage. We take Greater Ability. We take Bale for Volume. <laughs> A lot of DM brains and pain in the chat. It's fantastic. <laughs> I'm glad someone else can feel this now besides me. It's fine. As a forever tabletop DM, this is easily the most upsetting speedrun I've ever seen. <laughs> As it should be. I live to bring other people back. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what are we? We are level 15. We take great fortitude. Also, my cat is doing his best to be as in the way as he possibly can be. Uh, this spell doesn't matter. This spell does matter. This spell does. So I don't want to use. All right, cool. Cat's gone. Not that that's good, but it's uh, helpful. <laughs> To not have my cat standing literally on my uh Okay. Uh so now we go to now we go to the uh the old sycamore. So we do everything in this game, uh or at least in chapter one, basically back. Like we the only thing that we do in order is we go to the uh ancient tomb first. Everything else we do out of order in chapter one. Uh, kill the Stag Lord first. We kill uh, Tartuccio at the Old Sycamore second. And then we go and we do uh, like the, the Thorn Ford and the uh, Temple of the Elk and all that stuff. That's the last thing that we do. Um, so the reason that we kill the cat in Farnaross's thing is because we are going kind of stealth mode for this portion uh, for this map. Also, this is where we will be killing uh, um, Count Smolderburn. Um, hi, Keston. Bye, Keston. Uh, Keston's kind of useless. He just kind of walks around and doesn't do a whole lot. Yeah. Uh, so... 
we go in this. He doesn't do a whole lot until he ends up getting himself killed. Or he doesn't, because uh, we're lawful, and he doesn't die because we're lawful. Um, so the we right there, what we just did right there is one of the reasons that I take lawful neutral as my alignment. So if you are neutral, you have a dialogue option there to basically make friends with both the kobolds and the mites, which means that you don't have to fight any of them. So you just run right through all of that. Um, so this is like the, the sneaky the sneaky part of the game. Uh, that spider is in a really bad spot. The spider moved out of the very bad spot. So that's... Um, so basically we're trying to sneak our way through these caves. Are you kidding me right now? Uh, this is like the worst placement. And of course, the spider that's completely out of the way is the one that dies. All right. Um, so we don't want to break our invisibility because we have very few spell slots and we don't want to fight any of these guys because that's slow. Um, so like, ideally, I would have just been able to run through. Yeah, this is invisible. Uh, this is not haste. Uh, well, it's technically haste. It's kind of haste. It's single target haste that lasts minutes per round, or minutes per level, instead of rounds. Um, so, those were very scary centipedes. These are also not great centipedes. Okay. Um. So yeah, imagine trying to run through all of those very tight caves with that giant cat. Uh, yeah, Expeditious Retreat. Uh, Expeditious Retreat is... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, is is basically single target haste. that lasts a lot longer. Alright, so we are now... Gonna go beat this person. Oh yeah, the old Sycamore. So, funny story. And this is, this is also kind of why I wanted to put the Count Smolderburn incentive in. Is because I actually quit the game for like a year because of that guy. Um, so he killed my my entire party. I got super salty and uh, quit the game for a year. And so not only is this vengeance for everybody else that has been trapped by that man, this is also vengeance for little baby me from like two years ago. Because uh, I also misunderstood the game mechanics and I thought that my entire party was like perma dead and I could not get them back and I was like I don't want to go through the game with one person this is garbage um and then lo and behold I'm currently going through the game with yeah expeditious retreat is level uh level one haste is level three yep and haste is Haste does also add, uh, yeah, unskippable cutscene here. It's about 45 seconds. Um, so Haste adds movement speed, it adds an attack at your highest attack modifier, and I think it also gives you plus one dodge bonus to AC. So it gives you a lot. Haste is a really, really good thing. Uh... So yeah, that was a random mysterious stranger who just revived the uh, the revived Tartuccio. By the way, that's Tartuccio, the gnome from the prologue. Uh, he turned himself into a kobold to become the leader of the kobolds because reasons. And uh, he's kind of losing himself in the kobold. Uh, here's Valerie. We tell her we never want to see her again because she's the worst. Uh, she wastes a lot of time when we're trying to leave. Also, I apparently failed to see that centipede, so that, like, threw off everything about what I was doing here. And here we go, and we fight Count Smolderburn. So, anybody who's seen this camp knows what I'm talking about. So, you, this is, like, the first really big area in this game. Like, this place will rip through all all of your um everything like all of your everything basically yeah exactly all of your spells all of your consumables all of that stuff yeah so uh keep in mind i'm level 15 here and it took it's taking me this long to kill this guy. i'm level 15 on story difficulty and it took me that long to kill that guy 
Um, imagine being like a level three party and resting there because it tells you, ah, there's enough stuff here to rest one. So it's just a free rest. You get all your spells back. You get all your stuff back. If your animal companions are dead, they come back. It's just a good time all around. And then halfway through your rest, he shows up and he's like a level nine will-o'-wisp. Will-o'-wisps have very high AC. Will-o'-wisps are immune to all spells except for uh, magic missile uh, or any that don't uh, go against spell resist. And he just murders your entire team. What's like just absolutely destroys them. Uh, where is Cone of Cold? Cone of Cold needs to come over. I mean, he's like, he's like a member of the of the Fey Court. So yeah, yeah, he's like he's like a very high level person. <laughs> uh, there is a reason that he is as powerful as he is. It still is very rude for them to put him there. Uh, so yeah, that's why that's why I put him that and that's why we murdered him just now. Because he's not gonna is lie, the... I thought it said discount. Discount Smolderberg. Yeah. <laughs> <Discount's Smolderberg. laughs> This isn't this isn't you know the this isn't the prime like smolder burn, it's just the discount one. Yeah, this is fine. You'll fight the real one later. Yeah, that was just dumb. Oh, I didn't even smolder realize burn. Dagroth just put it uh gave a really good point. Uh apparently it saves right before you fight him. So it, you like are locked in unless you have another save recent. Which a lot of times you're not gonna. As a DM, I just don't get the point of even putting him there like at all, other than to be like, ha ha, got you. <laughs> it's literally a gotcha moment. That's it. Ah, good. All right, okay. So this is a fight that we could have gotten any time that we were crossing through these gnarl. Um. Yeah! It is, yeah, that's fair. It is also some foreshadowing. Uh, so right there, you saw we one-shot them. Uh, if if you doesn't get... matter if you die. Uh, three, one. Okay. Um, you can get that fight when you are level, like, when you're first coming through here. So when you're, what, level yeah. three? It uh, you can still kill them, but it takes, like, an extra 20 seconds or so. Uh, so the fact that we just kind of accidentally stumbled into the fastest version of that fight is really nice. Um... Nethius, you say that. However, uh, I literally tried that when I first fought that guy, and he chased me all over that map. Uh, so here is the first instance of skipping cutscenes with Dimension Door. Uh, we just teleport up to this cliff, and we skip two cutscenes. Um, I You can actually leave this area before that dialogue box pops up, but you do not at all want to do that because if you do that the temple of the elk doesn't show up and right. you have to go all the way back through you have to go back in you got to teleport back up all that stuff um so one time i was doing a run a couple of like a while back this was a while ago and i was like you know what i wonder what you actually need to do to be able to progress the story right like, what exactly in Chapter 1 is required? Do you just have to kill the Stag Lord? Uh, do you have to do other stuff? Like, what is all necessary? And I found out that the game will actually allow you to... Uh, we actually want to move our character over here. The cat will uh, run and skip a cut, uh, trigger the cutscene. Also, we just skipped another cutscene, by the way. That's why we dimension board past this. You basically want to avoid this uh, path here. Hi. Cool. Why are you attacking me? I have done nothing to you. Um, delay poison is super good. Delay poison is super busted for this game. Uh, so we, I'm doing this a little bit. Uh, oh, this is bad. I did not mean to do this. I did not mean to actually aggro the bear. So usually, okay. So well, the cat saved me. Right, everything's fine. Um, usually I hit the bear with uh, scorching ray and it kills him. Um, while the cat goes over and kills the bull. So that ah. we can just immediately talk to Trish in here. But I went a little bit too far and actually aggroed the bear, which is lost a fair bit of time there. Um, I forgot what I was saying beforehand. Oh, uh, skipping Trishian. So basically, you don't 
technically need to pick up Tristian or do any of this quest that I just did to finish chapter one. The only two flags that the game checks for is, is Tartuccio dead and is the Staglord dead? If you've killed both of them, you can go and continue the game. However, this will soft lock you at the beginning of chapter three. Um, anyone who's played this game will rec remember the, uh, the surgery in chapter three. Uh, the surgery will not happen if Tristan isn't there. Oh, oh my I favorites. forgot. I forgot. <clears throat> it's back to um, so you will be stuck in that room without a door to leave <laughs> and without any way to progress the game. So you're just stuck in that room forever. That's hilarious. Um, learned that, was very upset. Learned my lesson, never did it. Yeah! Also, yeah! if you just run that way and do that, Tony Cold murders everybody. The surgery uh, is one of my favorite scenes. It's so cool. With all the different skill things you can do. All right, so you noticed that I went into the menu there and I turned off, uh, or I turned on experience sharing. That is because this game will set any brand new companion specifically brand new one to whatever level you are so these guys are normally level three when you pick them up since i'm level 15 if i turn on experience sharing they are also now level 15 so i now have three level 15 characters at the beginning of chapter basically uh this is the last thing that we do in chapter one. um yeah does dad not, doesn't like him. <laughs> it does not do that in wrath no, it doesn't? Okay. It doesn't work that way. Because I, I tried it, and then I had lower level characters, and I was like, I hate this. Uh, that's unfortunate. Um, so yeah, Jubilost and Akundai will also do that. We do not pick up Jubilost because he's annoying, and I don't like him, and also he's slow. Uh, Knock Knock will also do the same thing if you pick him up. Um, the primary robe of Uh Her name is Octavia. Um... <laughs> So we do pick up a Kundayo though. Jubilast is amazing. However, picking him up is incredibly slow. Uh, also, I can only say that Jubilast is amazing based on other people's reports. I've never actually used him. Jubilast is confirmed best companion out of both uh, games. I'm gonna fight you because you did not just say knock. I mean, knock knock's precious baby, but like, Jubilast is a. Her bro. name is Sneak Attack Fireball. Yeah. Yeah. This is a bro. Knock Knock is a precious baby boy, and I'm so sad about him. Because yeah. I wish that we. What? Oh, no! What? Okay, so, uh. So that's a thing that normally doesn't happen anymore in my runs because I don't have all of the uh, DLC installed. Uh, but, so, a quick peek behind the scenes. Last night, I was trying to get everything set up for the marathon. Oh, no. And my Steam started throwing an error message and crashing constantly. I ended up having to uninstall and reinstall Steam entirely. Which means I had to also reinstall, uninstall and reinstall every game that I have from Steam. Apparently, when reinstalling this game, it also reinstalled all of the DLC that I had. There's so um, many long required cutscenes with them, though. Yeah. Oh, well, like okay. The... So. I guess there's only the two if you don't do anything, then, I guess. Yeah, no, so there's... there's that one right there, which. Um, there's. This is, this is totally fine because we can do uh, donations if we want. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we're about to get a very long. Like this, this next yeah, cutscene. Kesson's gonna do his job as the tour guide. Yeah. He's the gonna only show purpose us around. he has. But yeah, uh, for sure, we can definitely do some donate. Yeah. Let's go ahead. Actually, we can start it right now. All right, cool. We had a $10 donation from Rackadactylus. Thank you, Racco. Turtles donated ten dollars i like this i want to see more people doing this they said i rolled 3d6 for my donation amount and this is what i got hey, it's a, i love nice that. roll donations pretty cool right nice and we had another no. 15 dollar donation from shadical z 
Roll a max level Octavia's uh, fireball. Like, damage. And then donate that. That's... It's like 19d6. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll get a bank loan for that one. Yeah. Uh, if you got more, we got plenty of time for them. Let's see here. What do we got? You can read one of these uh, informationals. Yeah, sure. You may have noticed talk about uh, incentives and prizes. That means you get to vote with your wallet to name characters. Get a runners to complete different difficult or ridiculous tasks, such as a discount smolderborn there that we just saw <laughs> or help picture which story you get to see in certain games uh we also want to uh thank our um our logo and promotional banner artist kevin you can find him on twitter at, at k butts corner we've done all the artwork for quest since the first questing for glory in uh 2017 nice So yeah, he's telling us where we can get a drink at the moment. Of course, he knows it well. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, the tavern's ale is blessed by Cain and Callian himself, I swear. <laughs> oh, so this line made me laugh so hard in my first playthrough because I was playing a blue-haired gnome, and this guy says that the Baron is tall as a troll and breathes fire. And then I walk up with my, like, three-foot self. <laughs> Um, so yeah, good. It's it's good to see how uh, educated my guards. Are. Uh, they're asking about. Wait, sorry. Oh, get shattered defenses and sneak all day. Uh, yeah. So, sneak attack. At least in these game, I. It's been a while since I played tabletop. Path it's not path. the same. So this yeah, game, yeah, this game it's way easier to sneak. But in Wrath, they didn't fix it completely. But it is closer to the tabletop than this game is in terms yeah. of how you can sneak. So like you can sneak just by flanking, which in this game flanking is literally just you have two melee characters uh, yeah. in attack range. You don't have to be on opposite sides like you do in the tabletop because positioning that would be a nightmare. Um, and I fully, fully um, support that decision. It just kind of takes the like strategy out of like character placement, though, because you can just be like, OK, line on line combat, like medieval times and just do it yeah. until someone dies. And it's like, that's not as involved oh so uh harem right there just you know slides away like he does um i don't know why but whenever somebody is like in one of those talking animations they and they start moving they just like like no animation just slide across the floor it's kind of great um so we're about to do our first shopping trip of the game we have three the last one is literally only for a single scroll um that event skipping feature is vanilla um it is it happens if you have auto kingdom turned on so like basically i have no actual control over my kingdom uh oops i forgot i need to do this no need that too um so, this, we get rid of this, we get rid of this. There we go. So, we sell off a whole bunch of stuff here. We buy the Ring of the Beast King that gives our uh, animal companion a boost to strength and con, I believe. Strength and dex, sorry. Uh, we buy Trap Springer's Gloves, which makes Octavia a bit better at... Um, um, picking locks, and we buy out all of the rations and the, uh, about all the rations and all of the dinosaur bones, because dinosaur are awesome, and they also let you get the best buff that we have available to us, legendary proportions. 
Um, we also buy the Cloak of Shadows to help with, uh, like I mentioned before, that plus 40 perception. Um, enemy sneaking past them. Uh, bug out and de-auto itself. I never figured that out. I did not. No. Uh, so, funny thing happened a while back. I was running this game, as I do, um, and I accidentally just started Chapter 4 early. Like, I just, like, completely spaced and just walked right past the Goblin Fort and the Womb of Lamash 2 in Chapter 3 and went straight over to Chapter 4. Um, finished it. Went through Vorticai's tomb, beat the whole thing, went back to my kingdom to continue, and every time I clicked that, um, every time I clicked that skip to next thing button, it was just blank, and no time would pass. It would just be the same day, every time. Uh, it was very strange. Still have no idea what it is. Still have no idea how to fix it. Um, we do spells here. So, Acid Maul. And Greater. Oh, Meta Magic. Controlled Fireball. So, basically, if you notice what I'm about to do, we use a lot of Controlled Fireballs. It's basically our primary damage dealing. Oh, I actually didn't prep any. Um, we just... Load up Octavia, all three of these spell levels, we load up on um, heightened and empowered uh, fireballs. And then there's a spawn of Ravago. Uh, there is no Tarrasque in this game. Thank God. <laughs> uh, technically, we it would be impossible to beat, because you can't kill it. Um... All right, so we have our fourth and final anim uh, animal companion. Uh, companion. Jesus. He brings an animal companion with him. Um, Kunayo's great. Uh, he has the personality of a stone, but he does a ton of damage. Um, and like I said, he brings an animal companion with him, which also does a ton of damage. Humans are animals. This is true. Um, so here, I forgot to rest before we came in. Oh, can we actually get a rest thing here? No? We'll I love Kundayo in this game because most of his conversation options when he chimes in are just him readying his bow. Yeah, like he <laughs> is a murderous, crazy person. <laughs> uh, So Kundayo actually does have a fair bit of personality, uh, but his personality is everything that I see must die. Well, anything um, that resembles a monster or is evil. So, there have been multiple times where I've been doing a run, and we're doing great, we're doing stuff, everything's going great, and then suddenly I'm in combat with somebody. And it will always be it, because Akundayo just saw them. They will have been in, <laughs> like... So, if, if Akundayo is in combat at all with any creature and there is another potentially hostile creature within his line of sight he will just turn and start blasting um it happened at the end it primarily happens in chapter three now that i think about it actually um so <laughs> like i'll be in the goblin fort and i'll be fighting a bunch of the goblins at like the the sacrifice like the the statue there and then he'll just turn to the left and be like, oh, there's a warg over there minding its own business and not being a threat to us at all. I'm going to shoot it. <laughs> and suddenly I have an entire other group of goblins that I have to kill. His like, eyes please, 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 sir. Just don't do that. <laughs> Could we please just not do that? So here we have the game. Can I get Octavia's spells? No way. I was not able to get Octavia's spells placed before the combat ended. I am slow at that. I'm bad at it. I don't know why I'm bad at it, but I am. I've never once been able to do it. Ikunai is basically Pathfinder Batman. You're not wrong, actually. 
Uh, except he's not quite as rich. Nonstop said archers are broken. Yeah, they're broken in most RPGs, but I also find them incredibly boring to play. Because all they do is, is shoot. True. You just shoot, and you just sit there and shoot, and that's all you can ever do. Why am I here? Also, he's dead. Uh, also, I should free haste. Poor little bit. Uh, okay, so the story behind haste unit clipping bug. Uh, I don't know what you're talking Did I just clip through the door without meaning to? Uh, so we finally get to equip stuff. Uh, put that on. This on. This on. That should be it for me. And I, uh, Gongar, person, guy. This, you, this, 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 not that. This, this, this. You, you get the bow, you get that armor, that hat, and that. All right, there we go. And we are done with looting for the rest of the game. We take literally nothing else. <laughs> automatically when you have haste on real time your team members will just walk in oh yeah 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 devourer of metal is a completely busted item um it's yep. basically a lar it does large bow damage as well as also doing 2d6 acid damage uh yep. at the cost of a minus two to attack which is like non-existent absolutely and yes, Akunaya does have cheater stats. A lot of companions in this game actually have either cheater stats or completely light handicap stats. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's that is that is a thing. Uh, it is bad. I, speaking of being bad at things. I just had my wizard or sorcerer just shooting a bow instead of casting spells, which I am embarrassed. Yeah, Valerie's bad in pretty much every sense of the word. She's a, I hate her. <laughs> the only thing that she's good at, more broken. she is just really good at being a tank. That's about it. And even then, if anybody even looks at her with a touch attack, she just falls over. Yeah, I would say that, like, unless you, like, power game her build, she's not even that great at being a tank. All right. Oh, that was... Uh, that was the boss of this area, by the way. Uh, it was a two far. It was a, it was a double boss. Uh, that was Tartuk, by the way. That was Tartuccio. Uh, yeah, Dagra. She makes a great bard. Yeah, he actually uses. Oh, um, yeah, it was Tartuccio again, and it was a Hargolka who normally is a very difficult boss. A great bard. Like he, he's a troll with fire immunity. So one of his two. Like regeneration weaknesses is just gone, and he also does a ton of damage, and he has haste on himself as well. He's just like terrible, terrible, terrible. Valerie is a bard. It's just like she doesn't even like to sing. <laughs> See, you're thinking like a role player, not a speedrunner. I'm thinking like a standard <laughs> tabletop player. Don't worry about it. There can be bards that aren't about singing. Not in the, what not about in the, the archaeologist. Oh yeah, but then as an archaeologist, like, what is she even gonna do? Like the She's whole gonna, point of her being. Look, a bard we is have ninety nine dinosaur bones. bones. There's plenty for an archaeologist to do. <laughs> <laughs> she gives depressing speeches. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Up. Like kinetic night, Valerie. I don't even know what kinetic night is. Ooh, I have Kinetic Knight Valerie is fun. There's no reason for it, but it is fun to try out every once in a while. Oh, also, uh, our cat actually runs our kingdom for us, by the way. Um, we are very a fair and wise player. ruler. Yeah. Uh, he eats the people that irritate him. Uh, <laughs> Fit right so, into the cult of Lamash, too. The reason that we have the cat uh, actually hitting this and actually running our kingdom is because, um, hey, Robin. 
Uh, the cat's position does not get reset every time we do this, whereas our position always gets reset back to the throne. So it saves us the travel time of walking back up to the table every time. Also, if you noticed, uh, the little button to interact with the table will spawn before the cutscene ends. Um, what was I doing here? I forgot which button I was supposed to press. Uh, so if you're spamming and you are able to click it, this little thing pops up before you're supposed to technically be able to. Uh, here's Jaythal being uncharacteristically not murderous when she finds the person who killed her. And bringing it up to you and being like, hey, what should I do here? And, that's like, and I just tell her to deal with it herself. And I don't hear about it ever again. So I'm pretty sure she just murders that guy as soon as they leave here. Also, Jaythal's the worst. What? Um, <laughs> Jaythal is my girl. I was waiting girl. for that. I was waiting for that. <laughs> if I could have romance her, uh, you know I would. I mean, All you right. did romance Camellia, so. Camellia is way worse than Jaythal is. Camellia is way worse than Jaythal. Jaythal has I will, I will agree to that. Camellia Jay is. Yeah. Jaythal's a sociopath. Camellia's a psychopath. Romancing a literal corpse. You, you, he has a point. <laughs> Listen, Jaythal's great. She knows what she wants and she goes after it. Except you for gotta, when you make her conflicted. And then she you gotta love she a powerful anymore. woman. Alright? She's fantastic. <laughs> Means monk dipping everybody. Yeah? Oh also not god. <laughs> monk dipping. Don't even <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I love having unsug on this because he is so much I'm like an the RP foil. person like he he cares so much about the RP and then we're just like yeah no we just you know do the thing I'm just the then, foil oh god I have the cat concept. again John has rejoined the stream by the way my my cat's name is John well one of my cat's names is John John uh, the other Jacob Jingleheimer Schmidt and he's just John the orange cat and then I have Shelby the three-legged cat who tends to uh Ah, here we go. Here is where we softlock if you don't pick up uh, Trishan. Oh, I'm also going to see if I can't get the uh, leave. I'm going to see if I can't get the jogging in place. So if you run past this. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> if you run past him with haste on and then you click on him to start the thing, he'll just run in place while uh, while he figures out what to do. It's great. Brilliant. Yeah, so Knock Knock is amazing, precious baby. I don't even. Stop the thing it. I hate Cat. with these kinds Cut of games out. is the monsters being automatically chaotic evil. Because Knock Knock's not even chaotic evil. He's just stupid and doesn't know. He's just better. real dumb, yeah. Like, that's not, <laughs> that's not evil. <laughs> he has, like, he doesn't have malicious intent. He just doesn't know better. I hate that, but he is precious. He's definitely chaotic uh, neutral most of the time. Do we? Exactly, Robin. Chaotic stupid. Love it. <laughs> knock Knock know. is hero, yes. You know, originally when they made this game, they were going to have a special like advisor role in the kingdom that was court jester just for Knock Knock, but they took it out. That would have been great. <laughs> that would have been absolutely perfect. It would have been brilliant. And I'm upset at them for taking that out. I would love to see the, like the results of the events that he could succeed at, <laughs> like yeah. what they would do. Oh, <laughs> uh, we're about to meet Knock Knock, but we don't keep him. Don't worry about it. Nothing happens. You have no proof. There's no witnesses. Nobody can. See, nobody sees what happens. Knock Knock belongs with the rest of the party but unfortunately he forces his way in where he's not welcome and we have to teach him a lesson he just wants to be a hero he does just want to be a hero and it's very sad that he goes about it the wrong way this is actually his coming of age story and you're just a side character yeah uh so we teleport up here because uh, there is a cutscene over this way with a Hydra where it eats a bunch of goblins and it's super slow. 
And coming up here. Uh, skip that cut. He dies at the ripe old age of right. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. Yeah. Um. So I have found out. So this cutscene basically begins as soon as the goblins at the beginning, at the entrance, are dead, and Knock Knock is visible. You can run up here before killing the goblins, and the cutscene will not start. I was kind of hoping that we could start the cutscene early, but it just doesn't happen. Um, so yeah. If we could find a way to skip this cutscene, it would be great. Oh, Neville is the real hero of the Harry Potter books. I've yes. completely forgot that that was a thing. That is like, not that, that is like an actual thing. It could have been Knock Knock at Jumanji's Mansion. It could have been, except he was busy being tied up. So, yeah, say goodbye to our poor precious boy. He exploded. Um... By the way, if you crit in this game, the person explodes, the target will always explode into bones for some reason. Like, it's just a rib cage, Regardless of if the person actually has a rib cage. Elementals explode into rib cage. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. That, that does happen. That's one of the things I love about Wrath. All of the new ways to kill enemies is just brilliant. Yeah, it, they are very brutal. Dismemberment. Oh yeah! If we skip that cutscene, we would admit, uh, we would miss the tactical wardrobe line, which we completely did not. <sighs> so remember how about an, uh, a while back ago I was talking about force encounters? Well, here's the first one. Yeah! And there it's stuck. Because Neville would maybe never claim to be the hero, while Knock Knock will be more than happy to remind you. This is also very true. My latest playthrough of Kingmaker, I think I ran into the cultist encounter like five times. Yeah, it's kind of the worst. Um, so that encounter is repeatable. As far as I know, it's the only repeatable force encounter. It's always the same group. I think it's random which one of them decides to explode into an owlbear. Oh, by the way, so the whole point of this chapter of the game is people are just mysteriously exploding and then monsters are showing up over their dead bodies. I didn't actually set the time. Uh, what day is it? It is... Geez, it was Monday! It was actually Monday. We could have just gone. Uh, so this is the only time in the entire game where the day matters. Um, the only day that you can actually do this part of the game is on a Monday, and I just goofed and skipped past a Monday, which I don't really check anymore ever because it never happens. Um, it's the season of bloom. They're blooming. Yes, they're blooming into bloody corpses and monsters. It's not great. Uh, so here's another unskippable cutscene. Uh, they're basically talking about how a woman gave birth to a monster and then died. Because that's the whole thing about Lamashtu. Lamashtu is the mother of monsters. Um, it's really messed up. Not great. And uh, we immediately kill them for their crimes. So... Turning the frogs into owl bears. Lamash too will avenge her children, he says as he walks away calmly. Yeah! I love simultaneous fireballs. They're great. Alright. Mobility. Yeah, there's a lot of casual walking when there should not be casual walking in this in this chapter. 
Uh, it also happens in the next portion when we go back to uh, the capital. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Lamont, yeah. Didn't realize she was Baphomet's mom, but that makes sense. Oh, we actually killed them all. Wow, okay. So it turns out being overly merciful here saves time. You save like three text boxes by forgiving the people that are literally trying to murder innocent people. Um, not entirely sure why that's an option, but you know, I don't judge. So, what we've done so far is basically we found out that the goblins are doing something. We found out that the Lamash 2 cultists don't know anything. We trade combat for just dialogue. Event later, where we trade combat for just dialogue. I do not remember which you are talking about. Okay, but here is where... Uh, this this is what I was talking about just a minute ago. So, Keston walks out. We have enough time for one conversation, and Keston says that... It says that he runs in, but he is casually walking in to tell us that there is literally a torch and pitchfork carrying mob outside of our castle. Uh, absolutely zero sense of urgency about the like, murderous group of peasants outside. If you let her go, they buff you instead of fighting you. I actually didn't know that. Yeah. Uh, so, my first playthrough, my first casual playthrough, I failed every single one of those persuasion checks, um, and I had to fight them, and they all died to a single fireball. <laughs> Pulses don't know anything. They, yeah. Hi, Nenio. How's things? Uh, here, Tristan is trying to get us to do something. We don't like Tristan, so we tell him no. Um, Tristan's not real, and we will. I will show you that in Chapter 4. Another romance option I wish I could have without having to be female. Oh, well. Can't have... Can't always get what you want and all that. I know, but in a fantasy game, sometimes I just want all that I want. <laughs> just want <clears throat> all the things. Why can't I just have all the things? It's called fantasy. Ah, so uh, about going over here. We don't go over here yet, and I'm just a dummy. Who just kind of forgot an entire portion of this chapter. That's what mods are for. I do use They're lots of mods in my Kingmaker games. I use the Call of the Wild mod, which is like the big one, but I haven't seen one that lets you romance Tristian as a guy, but if there is one, I will do it. Tristian is actually Pinocchio. Tristian is not real at all. And I will I mean, show he, you. He, no, he is not real at all. I have exists. proof. No, he doesn't. I'll show you what I mean. I will, like, literally the last time we see him... Well, you'll, you'll see. You'll see. I've beaten this game three times. <laughs> no, Tristan is not real. He is real. <laughs> He's not, though. Watch. Okay, so remember how I said that uh, Ikundayo is a murderous monster? Uh, this is one of the areas where he becomes a murderous monster. So if these guys up here are still visible, he will just turn over and start fighting them, even though they are not fighting them. So we come down here. Hello? Oh no, wait, that's not me. Alright. So run up here. Right around here. Yep. He shows up. Or he talks. We tell him to go away. Uh we pull Ragongar over here, teleport back down. And there we go. That is the goblin fort. 
Send Octavia up here to chuck a fireball at these guys in the back. One of them somehow survived. And we tell Keston to go home. So Keston here, if you're not lawful, Keston will go over to the wound. Hello? Can we, like, move at more than a snail's pace? Thank you. Um, Keston will go to the womb of Lamashtu and try to fight that himself. Um, and die. Unless you go there first. And if you go there first, Jod dies in the capital. Uh. But if we send Keston back to the capital, neither of them die. So, it's not, I don't know if it's actually faster. It probably is because you save a cutscene here uh, of Keston dying. So um, I have a question, Pondor. Yeah, go for it. What if you don't like either of them? <laughs> uh, well, in a speed run, that doesn't matter. Uh, because Jihad is a conservative uh, person. Jihad, Jihad is not great. Yeah, he <sighs> hates everything that's not worshiping Aristotle. <laughs> You're yeah. It's not fun. Um, and then Keston's just dumb. How did I miss this guy? I launch a fireball. Oh yeah, so somebody added to the time save in Act Two. Yeah, yeah, because you also get the uh, the time save in Act with uh, that whole. All right, so here we skip the entirety of the womb of Lamash Two. We just mentioned door up here, and we're at the final bit. Um, this skips an incredibly confusing section where you have fog walls that like phase you into two different phases of existence, and like you have to switch back and like murder a poor innocent bird and like it's a whole thing uh so we just skip the whole thing dimension door up that cliff and we're at the final part. Um, i recently accidentally found a way kind of to kill this plant early but i haven't been able to replicate it so i don't know how this actually yeah this skips a whole lot this skips a ton Yeah, the Wu Lamash 2 in my first playthrough took forever. Wow, Same. it took me hours to get through this place. Yeah. Yeah. It's a beat down. But then the like the next time I did it, I was like, how did this take me so long? The last time? <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you know what you're doing, then it's a completely different thing. The first time through, this place is a night. Yeah. It's uh so yeah. Awful. We go back. Oh yeah, we're supposed to find Kaisi at some point. It's not gonna happen, but we're supposed to. Uh also something that I need to uh, remember to uh, uninstall that DLC when I finish. So, one time loss that I consistently make, or one mistake that consistently costs me time is I forget to rest when I get here, because everybody's exhausted except for me. Which means everybody's moving at half speed. While you're loading here, I just wanted to remind people we got some really cool bid wars and challenges coming up. Yep. You can pick the language for Final Fantasy VII Remake, uh, French, Japanese, or English. That's a current bid war going on. Uh, you can name the file for Super Mario RPG. That should be a good one. Uh, you can choose the sprite set for the uh, Dragon Quest randomizer that's happening tomorrow. Uh, and there's a ton of challenge uh, incentives as well for the Final Fantasy 7 check those out anytime you, you folks are interested in making a contribution to NAMI awesome uh, so we just skipped every fight except for one in this area we just ran past everybody uh, this is another area where Akundaya will just uh, go murder hobo and just turn and start shooting other people so you probably saw that i kept making sure that um or i made sure that all of my characters were up by the door before i initiated combat and uh that was because there's like a fight going on over here and ikunda will very happily just turn around and kill can we keep also it? we're killing this guy because uh the tablet <laughs> The first time I saw this freaking owlbear, I was just like, I... I laughed. 
so <laughs> hard. This owl bear is like the I I've said it before. It's like owl bears are the doofiest enemy in the. <laughs> Like, they don't look threatening. They're super cute. Like, they're adorable. I love the owlbears in this it's, The rug that you get from it also looks doofy. Oh, yeah. It's great. I love it. Oh, man. I always forget which one of these conversations. Uh, Kitty. Help! Help! Acquire your diplomatic assistant. If I could actually click the OK button. Alright. Uh... Oh yeah, so uh, earlier on in the game, Lindsay stole from us, by the way. And there's an actual side quest to get back the things that she bought with your stolen money. And uh, that's the quest that just failed. Because we did not help her get back her ill-begotten game. Uh, oh yeah, that's Wireless. Wireless is also the worst, by the way. He's actually what causes everything in Chapter 4. Because he's a greedy greedy person so oh, that's right completely forgot which so I'm really bad at remembering what dialogue options I need to take on all these. Like, once I actually see the dialogue, I usually remember pretty good. But, like, whenever people are walking up, I'm very, very bad about that. Um. Okay, so here's the actual start of chapter. This is also the second of our shopping trips. We stop over at, um, I forgot her name. The cleric. What's the cleric's name? Jihad? Harem? No, oh. the, the one that you buy from. Oh, the Avatar cleric. Um, I know how it looks, but I don't ever really remember learning how to pronounce it properly. Well, we'll see in a second. Arsinoe. Arsinoe. Uh, okay, there you go. Uh... Uh, so we take one thing of delay poison communal, and we take like 30 scrolls of mass heal. Um, unfortunately, I am gonna have to go to the bathroom. I've been like having issues with that for like the last hour, so I will be back in just a second. Really, really, really sorry about this, but I have to. But, no problem. We actually have a donation, second. so just want to say thank you to uh, Caleb for the $10 donation. All of your contributions, folks, are going through NAMI, the National Alliance on Mental Illness. They have 48 state offices, more than 650 affiliates, a uh, host of signature programs, presentation support groups available free of charge. 50% of all lifetime cases of mental illness begin by the age of 14, and a massive 75% of them begin by the age of 24. So it is a issue that all of us have been touched on whether personally or from people we know at some point in our lives it's a very important cause so all of your contributions and all the hard work everyone behind the scenes are doing are going to assist in those efforts unsung you seem to be pretty familiar with this game but you don't speed run it is that true i do not speed run it um i started making my i started my youtube doing some like guide videos for it and then um because i had played it for a while and then i did like a video let's play that turned into a stream let's play sorry about that of the game seems i was uh, being being a bit too hydrated all right <laughs> <clears throat> 
So, oh yeah, Unsung was just telling us about how the they were connected to this game. Oh, okay. Well then, yeah. continue. Yeah, yeah. So I don't, I don't do the speed, the speed running or the power gaming or anything. I, I just very much immerse <laughs> myself in the, uh, the RPG and the lore and uh, have a good old time with it. But um, yeah, I've done, I've done a lot of guide videos for it. Um, back when I started, which means that the quality of those videos is <laughs> not as good as my more recent ones for Wrath, but you know, it's a uh, it's been a fun time. It's it's a big game, and Pathfinder is a system that like hasn't been turned into a video game before. So there's a lot to learn if you haven't played the tabletop, which a lot of Kingmaker players have not. Yeah. Uh. Sure. We'll take the blessings. <laughs> I've never actually gotten this particular one because I've always killed uh the priestess in the past. It's only recently that I've started sparing them uh so we got the blessing i don't know what it does do one character challenge runs those are blind. yeah i've tried to do i actually tried to route out a solo uh speed run and it just wasn't great Uh, okay, so we are coming up. Uh, this is chapter four, so this is uh, the undead invasion. Um, this is where we are going to be using the Bane spell finally. Um, so we're supposed to like go up here to the north. There's a barbarian camp. We're supposed to meet them. We're supposed to go through this whole long uh, fetch quest. Get three like Cyclops skull candle things and then bring them down here, and then you can open the door. Or, you come down here, we rest because everyone's exhausted, and you cast a level one spell and it opens the door. Um, so, this is developer intended. Um, this is a reference to the tabletop uh, adventure path where you can open this door by casting the Darkness spell. Uh, the Darkness spell is not in this game, but, so they they apparently they wanted to like still have like the, the flavor of that little secret. So they just replaced it with the Bane spell, which I guess is the closest, which kind of makes sense. Right, yeah. Um, so yeah. Uh, by doing that, that does have another little side effect. Um, the Soul Eaters do not know my name. So if you remember, if you played this game, if you remember, there's the Soul Eater fight towards the end of the first portion of this dungeon. Uh, where three people are forced into combat alone, each against a single Soul Eater. It'll, and it's always your character, your main character, and then two others. Uh, you get to choose their name. Oh, also, by the way, this is where we find out that Trishan is not real. Because watch, watch what happens after this con uh, after this conversation. He just blips out of existence. He doesn't mention door out. He doesn't like oh my go gosh. invisible. He just blips out of existence. Meaning he wasn't real the whole time. He was just a loose. Uh, I thought you had like an actual story reason for him not being <laughs> real, and it was just that. Nope, just that. He just oh blips my. out of existence, and he's I not I feel real. debated. You gotta make up a story if we get a big donation. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh. Um, I forgot to do a thing. Uh, so, we have to put the animal or our little, like, menagerie into a, uh, into, into their kennel for a minute. Um, because this whole area is just absolutely, like, it, it's literally nothing but undead. Which it's are nothing but undead. super fun to fight. Especially if you have 33 scrolls of mass heal. 
I can't wait. I can't wait for the. I can't wait I was, for the giant dining room of zombies. It's oh, the I was best. wondering why you bought all those. That's gonna be a payoff. <laughs> yup, it's super cool. It's super good. Um, uh, also, we use the scroll of Blade poison here because cloud kill is a thing. Now, for anyone playing this game with the soul leaders, you definitely want to take advantage of being able to pick the names when you can, because otherwise a random character will be like, my name's this, and da 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 da, and then you're stuck with that person being hunted by a Yeah, it's not great. It's not good. And sometimes I'm slow at doing the scrolls and the party members just murder the enemies. Uh, there is a potential skip right there in that hallway um, that I have not been able to get uh, to be consistent. And the way that things are right now, it tends to cost me more time than it uh, saves. And if I have time after the run, I'll show a little bit of the technique that I would use because it's hilarious looking. Um, and it involves the pit spell. Oh, I forgot to do a thing. Uh, so, you can actually Dimension Door past these. And by Dimension Dooring past the trigger for that cutscene, you will not have, uh, basically, the, the Soul Eaters won't get another name. I have not yet had a run where I remember to Dimension Door into that room. So, I have not yet had a run. Why is everybody moving so slowly? I know I'm not hasted, but come on, guys. We got undead to kill again. Uh, also, real easy way to skip this fight. You just walk away. You just walk away. And that fight ceases being a thing. Okay, so here... I'm gonna quick save just in case I mess this up. Uh, Alright, so we're not gonna mess this up. Just to mention door over here, and that skips giving the bird another because you see the crow here the crow is the worst nobody likes the crow doors are weird suggestions in this game. not even like good weird. uh we just don't care about any of these traps they don't i do love this dungeon a lot this dungeon is super cool there's so much involved with it, it's so fun. And if you do one of the DLCs, the Varnhold one, there's like other stuff that you can get here as well, which is cool. I did not actually know that. Yeah, because the, yeah. Var yeah, the Varnhold DLC connects this whole thing. So, yeah, because we skipped the second one and because the, uh, the guys didn't ever get my main character's name, only one Soul Eater spawned there. I haven't actually seen... Where's the... Uh, dismissal. So we actually want to use Dismissal here. Um, if they ever allow my character to be cast, sometimes they just um, That's kind of what just happened. Uh, so there's actually two fights in this area that don't work, or that don't let you just kill everybody with Scrolls of Mass Heal, and both of those are against Outsiders. So you just use Dismissal on your main proof away um it is that fight right there and there's a fight with a bunch of water elementals later on uh so here's one fight with a whole lot of people <laughs> and my main character decided that he wanted to roll like a negative 13 on initiative so it took him forever to actually get the scroll out oh nice. Alright, and then everybody's... It's all, it's all good. Everybody's gone. Uh, so here we have... Coming up in this next room is the maze. The maze is great. Uh, and you will see... Oh, I always forget about that. So you can actually skip this trap, which actually saves some time because it does slow you when you go through it. Uh, but I always forget that, that it's there, so I always miss that skip. Um... So, this is like a big old maze, right? 
So we click at the end of the maze, our people just start going through it, and then they just decide that walls don't exist anymore, and they just do all of this. Um, which is great. Sometimes, like, for whatever reason, the animal companions actually follow the laws of physics and continue through the maze normally, but, yeah, your actual party members. Um... Which actually saves a fair bit of time, because you don't have to walk all the way through that uh, thing. And then here is the cafeteria. Just a whole bunch of zombies hanging out, having some lunch. Uh, we send our boy over here, and we do this. And a whole bunch of people die. And a whole bunch of undead people die. And Ikundeo went and wanted to be a murderer. We can't. You can't actually like skip some of those if they haven't accroed you yet. The ones at the bottom there. Um, you don't actually have to kill them all. But Ikundeo wanted to kill them, and that is just his. That's just how he does things. So physics do not apply. Yeah, exactly. Marshmallow. Marshmallow understands. Uh, this is actually the final fight in this dungeon. Uh, fun thing is, is that uh, Vordekai is optional. So we come up here. And Dimension Door roughly here. And we Dimension Door here. Say hi to the boss. Say goodbye to the boss. And we leave. And Vordekai is no more, apparently. Uh, so the actual start, the actual trigger for that fight is a cutscene. The cutscene only triggers if you move while you are within line of sight of Vordekai. So by dimension dooring into that area and then dimension dooring out, uh, Vordekai, the, the trigger does not happen. And the fight does not initiate. Uh, well, Trish doesn't exist. I guess Vordekai shouldn't exist either. Exactly. Exactly. Um, so yeah, we just don't fight that ball. Oh, there is something that I forgot to do and I need to do. Uh, we actually want to turn off experience sharing again. Uh, we actually should have done that as soon as we picked up a Kundayo, but the experience, like, that you gain up to this point is pretty negligible compared to what you get in chapters 5, 6, and 7. So it doesn't really matter that much. We still basically hit the levels that we need to when we do. We we do actually get to level 17 in this uh, in this run. And this is actually one of the scarier parts of the overworld movement. Because if we get an encounter during these mountain paths, it's like a three-year fight. Like, it's the worst. Okay, good. <laughs> as soon as I got done saying that that popped up and I was about to... Um, so the reason that the mountain fights are so bad is because A, the maps are very serpentine. It's a... Hey, it's the skeleton. Um, it, it's a mountain path. It's like very curvy. It's going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. There's only one exit and it's at the very end. And... The enemies are fairly spread out every single time. So you can't, they're not all grouped up, so you can't just like fireball once. Um, so. And when you're coming back from there, everybody's exhausted anyway. So it's like, it's just 13 things stacked on top of each other to just make the mountain encounters there a night. And the fact that we didn't get one is very, very nice. Um. Is Trishan still removed from your party if you never trigger the cutscene? No, it is not. He is not. Um, he is still in the party. Uh, but he might as well not be. <laughs> <laughs> uh, here is where Amiri is the most passive-aggressive person on the planet, which does not fit her character at all. Uh, she literally comes up to you and is like, well, I had something to talk to you about my clan, but it's whatever, so bye. And then just walks away again. Uh, we collect that. We also start getting random plus one flails here, and I don't know why.
So many, so many of Mary. All right. Uh. Oh, so this chapter is supposed to be split into two, like, like a split path. Uh, you're either supposed to go and get Tristan back, or you're supposed to go up here and deal with the barbarian invasion. Well, Tristan isn't real, so we don't have to worry oh. about that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and nobody got exhausted on the way up here. Uh, which is good. Um, so we come up here and pray that it's not storming. My <laughs> last two runs, it has been storming here. If you So storms in this game cut your movement speed in half. And there's just because there's bad. no storm here doesn't mean... Oh god, I'm out of haste. Uh, doesn't mean that there's no storms once we switch to the other side. Uh, three, four, one. I always hit the wrong buttons there. Okay, cool. We're fine. Everything's fine. There's no storm. No, I don't want to... What? Why did you all do that? What is wrong with you? Uh, party members are growing lines of their own. I don't appreciate this. AI is the worst timeline. All right. Now, we tur so we turned off the combat AI when we came in here because we don't actually want to fight anybody. We kill one whole person in this entire map. Who wants to save the Aldori forces anyway? Yeah, they're the worst. <laughs> they're right. really the worst. So... You can come over here. We dimension door over here. I actually went way further than I usually do. So we should be very, very safe here. Come down here. There's a giant. Cool. Giant's dead. That giant transfers this from, like, the opening, like, scene kind of thing to uh, the one where you can actually complete the uh, this map. Um, me. I go. Uh, so if you actually move to the left before you kill that giant, you trigger a cutscene that's very long, also very buggy, because it's supposed to be the cutscene where Amiri fights Armog and gets beat down real bad and then uh, gets captured and all that good stuff. Uh, which is whatever. Like, it sucks. You trigger a cutscene. The bad thing is, is that it also resets your position back to the beginning of the map. So you have to go through the whole thing again. I've done that a total of one time. And... I wanted to reset so badly, but this run is... I, I don't stream long enough to reset once I get here, because it's like, what, two hours in? Yeah. Also, you have these guys that show up. Uh, this should be Air Elementals and Barbarians. Yep. Air Elementals and Barbarians. That one's not too easy. So it struck me as suspicious, but I don't actually know the, if the game is cheating there. I have only seen that cutscene once ever, so I don't know. Well, I've seen it twice, but the second time uh, there was a person and he was fighting nobody. So uh, Armog was doing a little bit of a, a little bit of a Fight Club reenactment. Uh. <laughs> The second time that I saw that cutscene. Very strange and vague spoilers if you haven't seen the movie Fight Club. You're not supposed to talk about it. I mean... You whatever. have already broken two rules. <laughs> oh, well, you know. <laughs> Punter, things. Likes, Punter likes to break rules. Yeah, I, mean, I am a speedrunner. Yeah. <laughs> I am a speedrunner. That's, that's kind of what we do. <laughs> I want to see an actual D&D &D game where the players are all speedrunners. Oh my <laughs> god. I do not. 
mean, I'll watch it, but I'm not taking part in it. No, I would not? not be a part of it. I have to. It, it would server. be the best. <laughs> uh, Armog's. Oh wait, no, we don't. Uh, Armog's weapon is incredibly OP. If your barbarian person can pass a, an consistently increasing will save or go insane, I think. What? Uh, Armog's weapon in this game. Yeah, no. it's like it's got a very high upside, but it is also incredibly dangerous. It's cursed. It's cursed to heck. The insane part is bugged. How bugged? What what bugged? How do? I never used it, so like by the, time, by the time I, get to that I, point, I sold that thing. By the time never I get actually to that causes point, confusion. Wait, what? What? So there's no downside, huh? Oh. That sword just got real good real quick. That's Unfortunately, it doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> we have the gear that we have. We don't need anymore. That uh, reminds me of a question someone had earlier, because I've seen this with other speed runs. Do you use okay. the most up-to-date version, or do you have to use a specific version of this game? No, this is the most up-to-date version. We do not dump. Um, so, if you just noticed, I uh, failed the perception check to find Armox. I have had multiple runs die because I forget to quick save there and just go for it and then fail the perception check. <laughs> and that's like a 10 minute time. It's ridiculous. Yeah, because you have to level again before you can check, right? Uh, There you can also go back to your uh, capital and like once the scouts finish scouting it out, they will find it. Oh, um, but yeah, it's uh, like, it's like a huge, like it's, it's a pain. I hate it. It sucks. Why not use the backup strat as a river? I do not know what you mean. So that is what. <laughs> it's a good Kitty reason. Cat, why, why, what? When I've you're the only two Kingmaker speedrunners and the things you talk about, the other person doesn't completely understand or know about. Well, it's usually, there's another recheck at the river, which... Oh, uh, so here, here is where we start walking through walls, and by we, I mean the kitty cat. Uh, so the cat is very good at walking through walls, especially if we make him swole as hell. Um, oh, I love animal growth. Uh, legendary proportions of actually. Animal growth, oh, I think, is... It seems like it's bugged. It seems like it doesn't do what it's supposed to. Uh, so we go through a couple of specific motions. It does... These work. It worked! Okay. That skip. Uh, yeah, I hope it's not a big deal. I hope I hope maybe I was just talking too low or something. I don't know. Uh, apparently the... Uh-oh. Okay. Uh. Okay. <laughs> Hi. I'm back. Hello. I have returned. Nice. Um... That was different. Yeah. We were all fine. It was just the stream that couldn't hear us. Apparently. Interesting. Very interesting. Uh, well, okay. So you kind of saw what happened there. The cat clips through the wall and then eats Armog. So there is a funny thing about the Armog fight. Um, Armog is a great example of... What, really? Please. Stop it. Uh, Armog is a great example of believing in yourself because you don't actually need to beat Armog to beat Armog. <laughs> so if you send the cat in, like this, this is something that happens if you are lower level or if you're on a harder difficulty. Um, all you need to do is hit a certain damage threshold on the boss. And then even if you lose, 
it still triggers his death scene and he still dies. So which is like 10 damage. Yeah, it, I think I think on when I was doing normal difficulty runs, so like I also I started doing runs of this game on normal difficulty. I am now doing full any percent where I'm just on story difficulty. Um on normal difficulty, I think I needed to hit him 3 times, so it was like 90 damage or something like that. Right, yeah, the the person that's in the fight with him goes down. So at that point the the Smilodon dies. And uh, and then he just all the skeletons explode and he just blah and dies. Um, My issue with that fight when I played is that I played a squishy caster and like I saved right before and reloaded a million times and every what? time he made a beat. Why am I getting this? Me. Uh, this is a dialogue I should not have gotten. I have auto kingdom turned on, and I just got a kingdom thing. That happens sometimes. I don't know what it is. Oh, it costs... Harem uh, needs your input. Harem needs to deal with it. <laughs> Harem's the worst. Oh, hey, dragon. Uh, we kill him. He comes to uh, give us stuff, and we kill him for it. Harem is actually the worst. I did a campaign. I, I actually did like his quest. Dagroth is right. I did like his, his quest. Um, this storyline is really cool, though, because I've honestly never seen anyone, like, make a depressed cleric before, and that's literally what he is. Like, he's just, yeah. like, fighting with mental illness the whole game. It's it's actually quite fascinating. I can, uh, I can deal with it if there's, like, a little bit more depth to it, but it just seems like any time he chimes in, it's just, like, the same one-note thing <laughs> every single time. Just, he, like... he does definitely get better once you finish his uh, quest line. He also told that Kundayo that his family was lucky to have suffered at the hands of the trolls. Okay, never mind. Harem's the worst. Wow. <laughs> never mind. Harem is the actual worst. He he was envious, is what he said. Oh. <laughs> That's poor taste. He's like, he's an interesting representation of nihilism taken to the extreme. It's a cool written character. I don't like him as a person. Harem is critical all. for low percent. Are you talking about your? your uh, I'm actually. I, I'm. I've been thinking about trying your route, Dagroth, with the new skips and seeing what the time could be. Uh, so Dagroth is the other runner. He's been in chat this whole time. Um, he's the only other person on the leaderboards. Uh, I also am just sitting here staring at a dialogue option instead of progressing the game. I am a speed run. I am. Uh, even when I'm just staring at the stare at them very quickly. Um. He has a completely different route than I do. Um, primarily because he always ran story percent, or yeah, story difficulty, and I ran on normal difficulty for a very long time. And on normal difficulty, you need the extra level. You will die super quick if you just go through the game without grinding. Um, so, uh, he has a completely different route from mine. And I haven't really tried to learn his route yet, but I'm curious if it is faster than mine. So after the run tonight, I didn't want to start practicing it before this marathon because um, I didn't want to, like, confuse myself and, like, accidentally, like, combine two runs into one that's just the worst, <laughs> right? Um Oh, by the way, we uh, start using the Heart of Ira again for this portion of the game, uh, because these enemies all have only one health. And the Heart of Ira is guaranteed damage without any um, animation. So it's very, very quick to kill all these enemies. Um, the Heart of Ira. <laughs> yep, super good, super good, super busto. Dagroth um, made a good point about all the characters being extreme caricatures. That's 100% true. I feel like in Wrath, they made the companions way better. I really way gotta try that. Wrath, Wrath is a very, very good game. Wrath of the yeah. Righteous. Um, is the I felt like the companions had, had actual depth. Ton of fun. The characters in that game, the uh, companions are great. Yeah. Buff the Lantern King. All right, so this is something that I never do because I always forget about it. But, so like, okay, we'll do it on over me real quick. So this is, you know, 
It's, it's, you know, a decent sized bullhead. We do it on the Lantern King. It is a very large bullhead. Um, I don't know, like, a very large bull bear head there. Um, <laughs> so, circle. yeah, it's like, it takes up the entirety of his body. Uh, I don't know why. I don't know. Does this have a animation? Not really, no. Okay. But yeah, it's just scaled up to his size yeah, for some reason. Fantastic. Yeah. Oh, the eyeball. So, uh, yeah, that's just that's just a thing. Uh, I don't think anyone hilarious. else is even buffable. Let's find out. Nope. Nope. Oh, hey, speaking of, you can buff Spolderburn. This is past uh, Spolderburn, by the way. Yo, oh, discount is back. Yeah. Discount. <laughs> discount Smolderburn. Yeah. We love to see it. This one is actually a discount Smolderburn because he only has one health. Uh, spoilers oh, yeah. for like two minutes in the future where I kill all the Willowist. If you do legendary proportions, will the. Uh, I do not big? have that spell. So will I he get big, big ball? Wait. Let's see if enlarged person works. <laughs> no. I don't want it. It does! <laughs> I I hate this. <laughs> He's I, such a big boy. I hate this so much. And the and the, the the bull gets bigger too. It's only supposed <laughs> to work on humanoids, dang it. I know, that's why I never tried it. <laughs> oh, uh we could actually progress. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> and just continuing the scaling of the bull head is just un Yeah, it's so good. Oh my god. <laughs> Alright, the only thing that you've lost is your mind. You guys saw it here I first. Talk. Yeah. Yeah, we got a marathon. World first. first. Yeah. Or or should I should I say the thing? Should I say the thing that's always said? That's never happened before. Too late, I already said it. Uh Tricky. -huh. There was no option. I guess we could turn on AI. Oh, actually, we do not want Lindsay in this. Lindsay, get out of the way! Me, every time Lindsay's around. <laughs> oh, I hate Lindsay. I'm actually about to yell at Lindsay real bad in just a second because uh, uh, I'm going to forget geez, that she's a thing. Now. Chaotic good characters always get on my nerves, man. <laughs> I try to do anything lawful or neutral at all, and then they're just like, how could you do that? How could you do it? Just her and Octavia, my ear is just... Nah, 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 nah. It's fine. Oh yeah, so there's there's a second copy of a plus one flail that just shows up in your inventory because reasons. Oh yeah. A wizard it's, did it. It's in the chest. A wizard it shows up it. twice. Yeah. Are you certain you're not Leave. a healthy? <laughs> I am a lawful neutral person for sure. <laughs> I am I'm not lawful evil, I'm lawful neutral, but like it's like chaotic neutral is even less annoying than chaotic good because chaotic good is like because what I'm doing is good, it doesn't matter how I accomplish it, and I hate that. Alright. Oh, hey, Lindsay, get the, get out of my party. Uh so every time I get to this point in the game, I always forget that Lindsay is in my party. Every single time. <clears throat> and usually I yell at her. I, I toned it down a little <laughs> bit uh, this time around, but I usually like scream at her to get out of my party. Um, <laughs> but I can't tell you how many times I've been on a run and then just forgotten that she's in there, which, I mean, it's not a huge time loss. You just go into the group manager. It You know, it's just like a couple of seconds, a couple of button presses to get rid of her uh, on the overworld map, but it's the principle of the thing. We killed Knock Knock for the same thing. He, Him trying to force his way into the party when he's not allowed uh, got him killed. And then Lindsay does the same thing, and we don't have the option to kill her for it. It's very upsetting. Um... Yeah, there was a time where I didn't know the group manager was a thing. That is true. Um, 
All right, so we are now in chapter six. Uh, this is the fight against Pytax. Also, uh, fight me. It is called Pytax, not Patax. Oh, uh, I was about to say you mean Patax. <laughs> <laughs> you knew it was coming. I did. I always called it Pytax. <laughs> I don't even. It, it started off as a joke, me calling it Pytax. Everyone then, calls it Patax in the game. I know, like it's it's objectively incorrect. And I, I know this. Also, everybody who's yeah. AI was also nobody was a which is great. Alright, cool. Octavia actually got the Uh Octavia actually got the uh locking. I think one of my high talks. I actually pronounced high talk. Um so, Octavia can actually fail to, uh, oh, I should be attacking the gnome. What? Um, Octavia can fail to pick the lock on this gate. It is a lock pick thing. There is a trickery check. And, uh, you can fail it. Fortunately, she is an arcane trickster, so she has ranged Lazier domain. So you can retry the check, but it's at a minus five. And it takes, I think, a full round action to do it. So it takes six seconds every time you fail. That's gross. It's kind of the worst. Um, fortunately, I've only ever had her fail that check twice in runs in recent memory. Oh, yeah, I know. It's actually a bug. You're not supposed to be able to do it. But I will take advantage. What do you mean a hunter needs to be... Ugh. Octavia doesn't like being called my Octavia by Ragongar, but Ragongar really loves calling her my Octavia, so there's a that's a just a nice little character tidbit for you guys. They're together, except not, except they are. You can be with them, both of them. Yep, there. Yeah, there's. There's a lot of things that I did not know how to do. I did that in my playthrough. I romanced both of them, and we all three got married. You all three got. <laughs> this is great. The relationship is toxic, but it's not. At least at first, it's, it's one not... of those that, like the companion quest, like. Yeah. Reel it in a bit and make it better. It's not toxic with intent, though. It's toxic because they've both been slaves and neither one of them knows how to be in a relationship. That's also fair. Because, like, Regarga doesn't realize he's actually doing anything wrong most of the time. He's also chaotic stupid. Um, yeah, I'm not a huge fan that he's considered chaotic evil as well. Me, uh, There's not yeah. really a chaotic evil companion in this game. There's not, because if there was, they'd be trying to kill you at every possible turn. That's... <laughs> Debate. I don't know. I think Wendu is probably the best Wendu's example good. of chaotic evil. Well, Camellia's pretty, uh... <laughs> yeah, but... I don't like her. I don't... I feel like hiding her alignment was so useless because, like, in Dresden, the, the minute you get hit with Blasphemy and it doesn't affect her, you already know she's evil. Okay, let's be fair. As soon as you see that amulet, you should know something. <laughs> like, come on. Nobody it's wears like... an amulet to hide your alignment. What's the point? All right, so Softlock is possible here. Kind of. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. Windu is neutral evil. Because she's all about self-preservation. That's what's neutral about her. Chaotic evil is just... <laughs> I like killing people. It, yeah, it is kind of hard to pull off, but I've done it once, and I never want to do it again. And also, it's technically not a soft lock. You can get out of it. It's just a very small window of opportunity. Um, so... What we're talking about, the soft lock here, is that group that spawned in up here uh, is triggered as soon as somebody runs. Um, we want to send these guys up here. 
I want you to do this. I want you to do this. Oh, you are out of control fireball. Um. <laughs> Um, oh god, please don't be confused. I thought I saw somebody get confused. Please don't. Please don't. Alright. Uh, that place can go pretty mad, because it can confuse your characters, and then your characters are more, far more dangerous than anything you're going to come up, come across here. Um. But anyway, so you can softlock there by going into that tavern before dealing with that ambush that comes in whenever somebody runs for backup uh, because they will spawn in and they will have you stuck in combat but you can't kill them to get out of combat because you're in a different map so you're kind of just stuck there is like a frame or two where you get out of combat and then get back in where you can if you're spamming quick enough you can get out um and I did end up managing to do that but um it's not great it's not great um and it's definitely something to be able <laughs> uh so we murder another person here because we are a terrible person um, but he's kind of an incredibly rude person, so I don't really feel bad about it. Um, but that interaction unlocks the actual city of Pytax. Um, and now we can go and claim it for our own. Uh, we go in. This is another area where we skip everything that we're supposed to do. Uh, we have three fights in here, if we do it correctly. Four, if we get a little bit unlucky um, on our way out. <clears throat> um, but yeah, we Dimension Door. This is the second Dimension Door clip that we use in the game. Um, and it just lets us go straight to the throne room, and we fight the boss... This is also the first fight that can be dangerous to us uh, since we leveled up to 15. Who are you? This is the Dwemer Cat. I completely forgot I haven't hit this guy yet. Yep. So there's three... There's three... There's technically four, but there's three that we will actually potentially get forced encounters in the Nara Marshes. This is always the first one. Uh, the cat surrounded by troll hounds. The second one is great because we can immediately leave. It is a bunch of bandits and trolls fighting each other. Um, and you just spawn right next to the exit. You're not immediately in combat, so you can just turn around and... Um, And then the third one is the worst because it's trolls fighting a merchant and then after you beat the trolls, there's a whole cutscene and conversation and all this stuff and I don't want to deal. The third one's the worst. But I have not seen that one in a very long time because we just don't really get too many opportunities for them to trigger. We basically have to be really, really unlucky. After Wrath, Dwemer Cat feels like backer content. <laughs> that one tends to only spawn in lower marsh oh okay that makes sense why i never see it because i never go to the lower marsh. gotcha all right uh we are about to get into a fight so we might as well do these now no 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 we don't cast this on the smilodon twice what do you mean i can't mm. whatever Somehow my mouse accuracy is even worse than normal. Oh, by the way, we were invited here to give Irovetti our crown. Uh, yeah. It was nice that he invited you. It's really yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. It's also super strange that he still invited me even after I sent his messenger's head back to him in a box. Which is literally what it says that you do. Like, if you kill him for coming up to you, uh, 
it literally says that you send his head back to Irvin. Um, which is very, very strange that he still uh, invites you. Oh, that's right. The Dwemer Cat and the Face Spider do help you against the Lantern King if you do that part. By the way, we don't do that part in the speedrun. Um... Clearly, the speedrun doesn't have enough fireballs. Not at all. Nope. No, never enough. More fireballs, always and forever. Uh. This is one of the reasons that I wanted to turn on, uh, or turn off the experience sharing earlier, is because it does let you hit level 16 before you go into the ear of Eddie Fight. Um, which gets us that school power that I was talking about. Uh, take waves of exhaustion, just in case it's necessary. We do not level up Octavia anymore because it's a pain. Um, I don't feel like choosing all of her stuff and choosing new spells and all that stuff. So we just leave her at 15. I think it's perfectly in character for Irvine to do invite you still. Maybe. Maybe. And he's crazy. Uh, well, he's not crazy. He's just... He's, he's definitely a... Definitely a, a, a person. I feel like I that's mean... the best descriptor for him. <laughs> The real, re the reality is, Irvetti probably didn't care at all about Tartuccio. Well, not Tartuccio, uh, Stefano. Oh, same. Like, we we literally just murdered probably, his messenger and sent him his head back. Yeah. Probably same though. Like, Irvetti doesn't really care about anyone but himself. That's true, but if you get a message like that, it's probably smart to not invite the sent that message to your house. I mean, finding you on home turf is a valid strat, though. If he came to you, he'd lose for sure. And this gave him the sliver of a chance that he had. Maybe. Alright. He's male, older, sexual. Maybe, maybe. Deviant, also, familiar. I just realized my health. <laughs> um, that nice. is... <laughs> you. Uh, so... <laughs> the one well not the one person one of the only people that can't get us through is the one that landed on the top uh there we go so we just skipped the entirety of this palace i'm gonna buff up because like i said this fight can go really really poorly for us um and i hate it uh, that should be good. I'm gonna fix it. That. Alright, we're good. So, two things that we would love to be able to do. First, kill Irovetti before he gets that spell off. He did. Awesome. Um... The second thing is we would love to get a trip off on this Naga before she casts Sea Mantle. Um, sea Mantle gives a plus eight to armor class on top of the shield spell that she casts basically immediately. So she has a plus 12 to her AC if she gets both of those spells off. And it's just real rough. Uh, so we're hoping to get a trip off on her uh, basically immediately or just, you know, crit and kill her, which is also very viable. Um, but... She is the one that can cast Baleful Polymorph. It is, as far as I can tell, it is randomly targeted. I've had her cast Baleful Polymorph on Ikundayo's dog in the past. But far more often, she casts it on your main character. Uh, I've had three runs, including my first casual playthrough, where she hit my main character with Baleful Polymorph and I failed the fort save. So, I just did the next couple of RP like sections of the game as a little puppy dog which was actually kind of hilarious uh 
we did not. Okay, we're fine. We're fine, we're fine, we're fine. Everything's fine. Uh, haste, we leave. Hopefully we don't get... Alright, it looks like we did not get it into combat. Uh, there is another group of were-rats in this other room that are in the throne room at that point. They are invisible, even though they're not technically using the invisibility skill. They just have, like, a plus 7,000 to their stealth. Um, that was actually a really good Irivati fight. That's, that's like, the most difficult thing. Like, that's, that's the most difficult fight that we have, I think. Uh, that's the one that has the biggest potential to go very, very poorly for. I've I've seen that Naga take five minutes to kill in the past, by the way. <laughs> um no exaggeration. Literally sitting there for five minutes trying to kill that Naga because I was out of uh dispel magics, so I couldn't get rid of her AC buffs, and just nobody could hit her. It's it can be ridiculous. Because she also has heal. So she could yeah. just heal for 150 health whenever she feels like it. Um, it took me a while, but when I did this on stream, I did a, I had a, I played a psychic with the mods, so I just kept using telekinetic storm and just blasting <laughs> her with force damage. Yeah. Yeah, that. It's not great. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. So that. That part, that cutscene that played, uh, where the Naga actually murders Irovetti for you, beat her at level eight. Ugh. <laughs> that, just, that just sounds like a nightmare. Yeah. Um, all right, so we're almost done. We're almost done. We have two more sections of the game. We have two more fights, actually. Uh, this run is actually going really good. Run is actually going really, really well. Um, oh. So here we are dealing with... Here we are dealing with, basically, what are we going to do with all of the things from Pytax? Well, if you just spam the three button, uh, it makes all your choices for you. I don't actually know what those choices are anymore. Uh... Why would I say that? Uh, because nothing has ever gone poorly for me in this next portion, and I'm not going to regret saying those words. You see, uh, the way you just said that made it seem like that's not true. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I've never sat there for 10 minutes at one of these skips. Although that was before. I have a far more consistent. Um, I literally spent like the entire first half of one of my streams this week, just practicing that skip and getting it down. Um, so there's a clip through a door in the first floor. So basically we clip through two doors in the house at the edge of time to skip every fight in that area and just go straight to Nyrissa. Um, we... The first one is far more difficult. Daggeroth. Yes, this is the last chapter of the game. We are going to the end. Um, there, are, there are two fights left in the game. And the final one is not the most dangerous one. I feel like the Jabberwock fight coming up is far more dangerous. And honestly, the random encounters that we get out here can be more dangerous than the final boss fight. Uh, in my opinion. Jabberwock's are free if your melee don't get confused and immediately eat your rain. And here's a random encounter because there's... Um, <laughs> please don't be one of those super long ones. What are you? Oh, God, it's this one. Uh, wait, we have we have banishment. We? we have banishment. We do... Oh, the tornado guy? Alright, I'm sorry. 
Are these those tornado guys? Yeah, these are just greater air elementals. There's just a thousand of them. They... Fortunately, banishment just kills them. Um, unbreakable heart. I do remember that. I do remember that. I don't ever cast. Um, primarily because I just forget that it exists. Also, it's rain, it's rounds per level, so and it's single target as well. So it's kind of a very long time. It's a very long time to cast that eight. So come over here, dimension door up this cliff. That skips a fight with a bunch of wolves and a cutscene. We dimension door down this cliff. No. Rukongar. Stop it. Okay. Uh, that was terrifying because over here there is a group of... There is a group... Why are you... That's fine. Um... There is a group of Mandragora Swarms, which anybody that's played this game knows uh, those are the worst. They're All right. the worst. And we're here. Second to last fight of the game. Oh, I don't have any scrolls of mass here. Not too bad. Not too bad. We wait until... Alright, everybody is out of combat. We now steal a whole bunch of people's stuff. By a whole bunch of people, I mean we steal three items. Um, equip you, we equip you, we equip you. Because we no longer have anybody else in the party. See, Jabberwocks and Demon. Yeah, they, they just have a... It, it's not, like, likely that they're going to cause an issue, but it is... More dangerous simply because uh, it's very possible to mess up that dimension to up to them. Um, so we are in the final area of the game now. Um, it's very pretty. It's an absolute nightmare to get through. Yeah. If you don't know exactly what you're doing. Uh, my first time through here, it took me like 20 hours or something like that. Just this area. It was absolutely ridiculous because I had no idea where the the final key was. So Fight lose to Nyr How do you lose to Nyrus on Tor? No, I guess I could see you how. Oh yeah, if you're yeah, coming in here expecting this area to be small. Yeah. Yeah. My first run through this game, I got through this place really quickly and I was like okay, this place wasn't too bad. And then I did it on stream and I was like taking forever trying to figure out the lantern thing. And I was like, <laughs> how did I do this last time at all? Yeah, I... Goof. This place is so gross. All right, so here's level 17. And here is where we get our second level in Inquisitor. Now, I mentioned earlier <clears throat> that Inquisitor... gives us a fourth thing that is important for the run. That fourth thing... Do any of these actually matter anymore? We're gonna stick with it. Be um, oh wait, I don't even take that spell anymore. Well, we're gonna take it. Uh, that fourth thing is we just got a plus eight to our initiative. Um, so level two... Um... Level 2 Inquisitors get to add their Wisdom to their initiative. Uh, if you remember, my stats, my physical stats weren't great. But my mental stats were really good. I started with an 18 Wisdom. Now I have a plus 8 to all 
like I have a plus eight to all um, mental stats hat. So I now have a plus eight wisdom modifier. Uh, I need to equip the lantern now. All right. Oh, also, we're about to save Lindsay's life, by the way. So this dimension door right here. Save Lindsay's life. Say hi. She's fine. She's just right here. Just hanging out. Um, we're going to quick save here. Now, we're going to get the camera in the right spot. So right now I'm looking at the B button for my backpack. I want it like roughly... My mouse accuracy is garbage, by the way. All right, so. Uh, oh, control E. Okay, uh, wasn't expecting that to actually work like that, but you know, we're, we're fine. Uh, and then we just walk through. We do get the magic lantern. Uh, we got the magic lantern from uh, the first nymph that comes and talks to us as soon as we spawn in here. Um, she's the one that gives it gives it to us. Uh, she does that just in case you don't get, or just in case you get rid of the one that you got from the old gnome in the womb of Lamashtu. So, like, you can get a second. Uh, here. We cast Invis on the kitty cat. Kitty cat goes over. No, I don't. Kitty cat goes over here. I come here. Oh, yeah. It, it's very easy to miss, for sure. So, this is... I th One, two, three. Click. This is this skip is courtesy of Dagroth. Thank you very much, my friend. Uh, he's the one who found that setup. I would never have found that setup, so appreciate it. Um, and we're in. We are now in the final boss fight um, room. We buff the cat. I forgot to buff the cat with legendary proportions. Oh no! And magic fang greater so this is going to be a little bit more difficult than it should have been because i just i messed up real bad um what why did any of those buttons happen uh it should be fine Get this yeah we should be fine uh i do also oh i forgot to save before I came. Uh, I forgot to save. Yeah, if Baleful, if Baleful works, also, I just tried to cast not the right spell. Why am I trying to cast that? That's not what I'm trying to cast. Uh, so, something... Okay, so I forgot to do a whole bunch of things. Coming up to this fight. Okay. She's been baleful. Oh, hey! That's also been baleful. Alright, it's fine. So the cat's gonna take care of the wyvern. I am going to. That's the wrong spell for his Well, apparently the... Uh, you, we do this. So the cat's just going to eat her now. It's less likely to hit. It's kind of unfortunate. Yeah, I had... I forgot I still had Banished Play on Autocad. Very... Oh. Um... Oh, never mind. Okay. 
that's the last fight. Uh, time will be coming up here shortly. I almost hit two there. That would have made time not be shortly. <laughs> so one of those, only one of those options lets the game end here. Two of those options make the game just add another section to the game. Um, so, and I almost hit one of those options because I'm bad. But hey, look, it's this guy again. Also, I think he still has enlarged person on. There are four options. I don't know what the non- -other Oh options. my right. gosh, she's huge. And, and, and as soon as this fades, time. I literally just tried to split for time. <laughs> I did not realize that the size that the Lantern King stayed huge if you buffed him like that. Big That's boy awesome. ball. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Uh, so had I not had the bathroom break, no, that wouldn't have been a PB. That was only three minutes off, though. It was only three minutes off my PB. Pretty happy with that one. Woohoo! Oh, pretty awesome run. But yeah, man. yeah, thank nicely you, done. Everybody. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, so yeah. Uh, I guess we just do like shoutouts and stuff now. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Closing remarks. <laughs> shoutouts. All right. Uh, well, on the song, you go first. I've been talking a lot. You go first. What? Uh, is it, am I just like shamelessly self plugging? Is that what I'm doing? <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, um, <clears throat> uh, yeah, I'm Unsung NPC. I'm on YouTube. I stream and do guide videos for RPGs. I've done all the Pathfinder Kingmaker stuff. I'm currently trying to get through the Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous stuff. And uh, I just started my, you know, Baldur's Gate saga, if anyone's into that. So feel free to stop by, say hey, join the Discord, all that good stuff. And I am Pondor. I am on Twitch. I also have a YouTube channel. I have not uploaded something on my YouTube channel for way too long. Uh, my current PB is not even uploaded on my YouTube channel yet, and it happened over a week because I'm lazy. Um, <laughs> I... Obviously, primarily focus on my Twitch. I stream six nights a week right now, but I did just get a job offer yesterday, which will most likely be changing up my schedule. Um, so my schedule will probably be getting shifted around here in the near future. Um, but <clears throat> I stream Pathfinder Kingmaker speedruns. I'm currently working on routing out Wrath of the Righteous speedrun. Um... I play Final Fantasy IX on the weekends just for some chill times, and on Sundays. Ooh yeah. I yeah. Unsung here, forgetting about the the thing that we do <laughs> on Sundays. Uh, we just started a Divinity Original Sin two playthrough co-op with me, him, and two other streamers, uh, Sly X Dog, and what is what did he say is classic new, rock. Classic but rock, rock, but rock is spelled R A H C. Yep. Um. So, yeah, we do that on Sundays. Duh. Yeah, that's kind of that's kind of my thing. Heck yeah! Right on, right on. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you too for uh, volunteering your time for the uh, cause. For helping thank you for to, having uh, us. Absolutely. Helping to support uh, Nami and the uh, the the donation drive that we're doing here. Uh, I've been your host, Phenomenon, everybody. I want to thank all of you who have been watching, who uh, have welcomed me to be your host tonight. Uh, we're going to be switching it up here real quick. Uh, we're going to have another host coming on in. And uh, coming up right after this is a run of Lost Odyssey on the Xbox 360. However, I think they're running it on an Xbox Series X, so that should have, have some interesting implications. Yeah, so yeah thanks, sure. everyone. Um we're going to be cutting to a break here while they get set up. Uh, please consider donating to the cause. There are currently some bid wars active that are coming up uh, for Final Fantasy VII Remake, 
uh, Super Mario RPG. There's also challenge incentives that you can enact as well. Uh, all of them look pretty interesting. There's quite a few for Final Fantasy VII, which is going to be a morning run. So time is running short on that. Let's see if we can't get uh, some of those incentives met. But once again, thank you, everybody, for letting me be a part of this. And uh, I'll see you tomorrow night as well. Same, same. Thank you all for having me. It's been a blast. Yeah, 